We taking what's a three year and we getting that done in three months. And I want y'all to understand this. You had that goal before AI. Some people had their goals before Google and the internet, yet their timeline for their goal is the same. Mm. How is the timeline the same, but the access resources and technology for efficiency changed? So that's laziness. That means you decided that the technology increased 10 times to increase my efficiency 10 times, but I'm gonna keep the same timeline, which makes me 10 times lazier. Come on now. So we 10 times the procrastinator today. We have operating with a sense of urgency to execute, not just to learn, to execute is the key. 19 keys, 19 keys. 19 keys. 19 keys. I appreciate my pops for teaching me how to be a guy. From a boy to a man and ultimately back to the natural state of being to a guy. Be as God's supposed to always move with that higher self. And I have to be able to execute it. Having knowledge is not power. The execution of knowledge is power. Knowledge makes a man unfit to be a slave. Because the only real knowledge you can get is knowledge of self. This is the highest level. The highest level is ownership. The highest level is power. The highest level is sovereignty. The highest level is higher consciousness. The highest level is when we own our own country. It's at a very high level. Not eye level. A high I like level. That. It's time for a high level conversation. We're here for another high level another conversation. Another high level conversation. 19 keys and this is a high level conversation. Tap in with the guy. Peace family. It's 19 Keys. Welcome to another high level conversation. Today, we have a face that you all should remember if you're a high level conversation alumni, meaning that you have been in the school of study as we drop these bars on a consistent basis. For those who have not seen the previous episodes, please go watch it. There should be a video that just pops up with a link and you can go tap in. But well, me and a good brother, Red Pill, had a great build, and it was a build upon the fantasy industry, right? The imagination industry. Right, things that are built to stimulate the imagination, things that are built where we can bring our fantasies to life. And there are whole industries created around that. Since that conversation, a lot of things have developed and society has had access to ways where they can instantly bring their fantasies and their imagination to life. The ability to go from idea to reality has now been sped up with new access to tools and technology. Anytime there's a new technology, it speeds up reality, right? Which also means that the human mind and the being has to speed up as well so things go normal speed in their life. That's the key. So every time that there's a new iteration, a new development, a new invention, a new innovation, the guys have to make sure that you have the ability to stay up to date. Right now, what we're dealing with is artificial intelligence versus natural intelligence, right? And if you utilize them correctly, you're going to have enhanced intelligence. That's the formula. But see, we live in a world where people have a decrease of emotional intelligence. And most people don't even know all the different types of intelligence already. So throwing in artificial before you get spatial intelligence, right? You know, there's mathematical intelligence. There's conscious intelligence. There's intelligence on uh, 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 bodily kinesthetic intelligence, music intelligence. There's interpersonal intelligence, naturalistic intelligence, existential intelligence, right? Linguistic intelligence. But now we got the whole world wrapped up in artificial intelligence. The danger of that is most people have not developed those other fields, mm -hmm. but this is going to be probably one of the most addictive type of intelligence that the world has had their hands on because it's in front of you and it's tangible. Now, my brother made a very powerful statement. He said, artificial intelligence is the BBL of for non-intellectuals. And I understand what you mean. We live in a world where you can augment all of your body parts. You can change whatever you want about yourself, right? From your breasts, from your booty, you understand me? From your face, your nose, your skin color, right? Your hair. Just about everything can be augmented. And now we at this place where you can literally get artificial intelligence. So you can fake it and you don't ever have to really make it, mm. right? 
And this is dangerous because there's a natural process when you're going through natural intelligence, right? Natural intelligence helps you build up that rational, that logical, that mathematic, that calculating mind. It allows the brain the ability to develop itself. Artificial intelligence mimics the process of natural intelligence. So if you get artificial intelligence and you don't go through the full maturity of developing your naturally intelligent mind, then you're like that person with the limitless pill, but they're dumb. See, in the movie Limitless, they say it works better if you're already smart. Right. So therefore, what you do with it creates the difference, right? Your ability to utilize it will create the separation. So those who are already intelligent, they still have an up on those who only use an artificial intelligence. The natural intelligent crew running the world, right? It's the same thing as if everybody just got money all of a sudden. Those who already got money just adding money on top of the money they already have. But if you're in a hole and you're ignorant and you're not that smart and your brain is not working and you can't focus and you don't know how to learn and you don't know how to develop yourself to become a high-level thinker, your cognitive abilities are not fastening, they're not quickening, right? You're not adapting. Your intuitive powers are not there. You don't have that much knowledge to create prompts. You don't know subjects, fields, theories, ideas, industries. The way you use it will be like everybody else to try to skip the process, to try to skip the line. But what you learn in the line is the patience, the patience of process and development. My father once told me, I was trying to get, I was going to tell him about something that I found. And he was like, nope, don't tell me because you're going to rob me of the ability to go through the process. Mm. Right? And I thought about that ever since that day. It is very dangerous to just be given something. The process of development is what makes human beings great. You can give any man the answers in the world, but his ability to understand them varies on what he's done before he got that answer. Artificial intelligence is like having the smartest people in the world work for you. But you can only tell them what to do based on your own intelligence, based on your vision. So everybody has the smartest people in the world working for them now. What will you have them do? Mm. That's the question we're here to answer today. And it's not just enough for us to have a vision on the tech bias of the creators. Most of us, we think about those who created artificial intelligence they have a vision for artificial intelligence because they say AI is going to mimic human beings and human beings are rewarded by creating very destructive and ravaging things, right? Our greatest systems is capitalism. And we do that by taking advantage of each other. We do that by creating systems while the next man is down. Another man becomes up, right? Well, what happened if artificial intelligence mimics the current power structure and dominant intelligence of this world, those who run it, then they will operate in that same way. And then therefore, a percentage of the population will become cattle, right? So that artificial intelligence rewards itself for its own progress. So I want us to think about it in this manner. What if we built it? What if the visions we may look at, you know, um, on the Schwarzenegger and all his movies of Terminator, right? And Skynet, Right. And, and we can look at all of the movies that was created by artificial intelligence. They all have a dark ending. They all end with ca 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 catastrophe. They all end on a singularity event. But the whole idea of being high level is that it's not about a singular event. Right. We can create multipurpose for these things. Alan Turing can said to be one of the fathers of AI and his German processing machine to try to crack the codes when he was trying to defeat the Nazis. Now they said that he was trying to create a machine to help humanity. Since then, we've had programs like MK Ultra that came about and was figuring out how to take some of them same processes where you take a machine that thinks like a human brain and they utilize some of that knowledge to figure out how to manipulate the mind, mind control. But were they trying to manipulate you into becoming a better human being or manipulate you into utilize you like sheep and they're the wolves? We know what the answer actually is. Now, if artificial intelligence came from African ancestry, right? And it came from the other part of the world. We can automatically think that the processes and the uses for artificial intelligence will be completely different for discovery, for cures, for creation, for building a world where everybody can thrive and we can solve every human issue and error that we currently have. But that's not the future we process in our head. 
because those who have power over the technology will use it the same way they use our technology for power, death, and destruction. Right. Today, we will talk about what it's like to have melanated minds utilize AI because we are the first AI. We are what they first mimicked. When we looked up to the stars and things that we knew, they asked us questions and they wondered how. Then they figured out how to get the smartest people, the most ingenious people in the world to work for them. Through processes of slavery, capitalism, indoctrination, all of these systems that they created. And now they said, well, how about we just create AI? We don't need you no more. And human capital starts to go down to zero. But how can we use it so that we can get ahead in this race today? That's the conversation we about to have. That's been your high level monologue. And now we can get into this high level dialogue. Talk to me. Everything that you said, you know, um, I second that. We are at a very interesting time. Uh, we are at a time that we should be rejoicing. We are definitely at a precipice where we could, be, we could begin to build out the future that many of us have envisioned. Um, for about 75% less of the budget that we thought that we had to build it out for. And, we, we, and we'll be able to save a lot of time. The levels of productivity are about to rise exponentially. Uh, we're gonna see overnight billionaires, parabolic wallets. People are going to be able to take this technology and do things that we've probably never seen done before. Uh, like the good brother was saying, the um, the approach that we bring to artificial intelligence has to come from what is known as an almighty intelligence. That is a coin dear brother Blue Pill uh, termed, and we have to tap into what our good brother Kaiba Kumedi called our ancestral line of super sapiens. Okay, we have to tap into our ancestral bloodline of super sapiens and begin to think like the engineers that our ancestors once were. Uh, we have to think as the Afrofuturists that our ancestors from the future uh, are. We have to think like the scientists and the problem solvers that we are known through our history to be. We have almighty mind, our DNA and our gene pool backs that up. So yeah, uh, we're gonna chop up some game about how to approach artificial intelligence with almighty intelligence and make some things happen. All right, so let's start with, um, let's start first with human capital, right? Now, when we think about the news headlines that we've seen, we've seen a lot of layoffs, right? A ton of layoffs. They getting rid of people left and right. Before the layoffs, right. They were just talking about everybody doing mass quittings. <laughs> right, right. It was a man. It was a um a mass exodus from the workforce. Yeah, monetarily. They yeah, did. yeah. And that was really a setup, though, right? The whole time to soften the blow of the mass layoffs. Right. Now there was a lot of people who actually didn't realize they was falling for the trick bag. Right. Now I always tell people to fire your job, but fire your job when you can hire yourself. Fact. Right. That's the other side of the coin. Right. right, you don't just fire your job and leave yourself you're stranded. Yeah, stranded, jobless, broke, homeless, right? Uh, becoming a homosexual, mm -hmm. did where you got to sleep for for housing. Professional couch surfer. Yeah, right. professional couch surfer. No, that's not what we do. It. The idea of firing your job is when you're ready to become a boss, right? right. Most people don't have the ability of self management, but to the direct point, when we see these layoffs. You know, it's because they don't need the people. It's not because they don't have the money to be able to still hire, right? And have growth within that company. It's the fact that we now have technology where if we lay you off, you're now replaced already by a machine. Fact. Now, this is a warning that people have been getting for years. Many, many, many years. And this is the unfortunate aspect of reality because many people did not heed the warnings, the lessons, nor listen, right? I've done, you know, uh, 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 many lectures and courses, right, and done many content on the subject that AI will replace, right, human beings in multitude of different things. Anything that AI can replace, will it replace, it will be, yeah. right? There are certain things that AI can't replace. Those are the things that go out, of course, last or never, right? And so 
as human beings, you're supposed to be developing your natural intelligence and skill sets. So when the time comes, you can master whatever domain is there. Right now, we talked about something. This idea of the AI BBL for the non-intellectuals, right? What does that exactly mean for, you know, a person who say that, you know, they see the red pillar, they see the 19 keys and they want to jump in the game as well. Right. But they feel like shit now, all I got to do is utilize AI and sound smart. Right. How do they go? First of all, how do we go about, how do we go about recognizing, you know, the, the, the false gods, right? <laughs> if you will. <laughs> Right. From those who are real, because there's going to be a lot of false messiahs that pop up. Well, I feel like that process somewhat has already started. Yeah. No, um, no disrespect to the content creators on TikTok, but um, when a one minute, you know, content creator or the one minute styler became a thing, mm. you began to see, you know, a lot of new people who uh, were embracing you know, being teachers and whatnot, coming forward and plagiarizing material that was already out there. Mm -hmm. And then we had this, uh, this scourge of clones on social media. So currently uh, I'm followed by about 20 vaccine key pages, oh. right? So, but not only were they cloning you, my little brother, that not only were they cloning your image, but in the inbox when they were fishing, and that's what a pH the phishing scams, they were cloning your lexicon. They were cloning, you know, the way that you, you know, peace fail, you know, they were cloning your, 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 your nomenclature. They were cloning your energy. So people were easily duped to think that, hey, Keys is tapping in on a DM and what, uh, let me send him $5,000 because instead he's building a, 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 aqua, a aquaponic a fish farm in Belize. <laughs> right. <laughs> So these things were already somewhat, you know, in the wings bubbling, but now with the rise of uh, artificial intelligence, especially by the way of the chat box, for individuals who want to take a shortcut and who want to jump the line, you know, you're definitely going to see a lot of uh, content being created that's going to be, you know, somewhat artificial and, and once again, like the good brother was saying earlier, there are steps that one should take, you know, in, in, in the realms of intellectual knowledge, you know, prior to this conversation that we're having before right now, uh, that was one of the things that you couldn't acquire from a store. You feel me? That was one of the things that you just couldn't, you know, intellect was something that you could not just get from Barney's or Saks Fifth Ave and couldn't order it from Amazon. It was something that you had to earn. It was something that you had to sit at the feet of the masters. They say 10,000 hours of studying, you know, to earn that degree or whatnot. So this would definitely be, um, that, that, uh, that will be cut in, in so many pieces by this new technology that we have. And, um, and, and it is so good because like I told Keys, you know, with, what, with the people who are sitting in a, such a situation that they're sitting in right now, and you have a leverage. Your leverage is knowing uh, what's, you know, knowing what's, what's going on, knowing what's here now, and being able to level up now to a higher level of now building or creating or manifesting. So people who are out here being charlatans or clones or, you know, just running around cutting a line, That'll be something that they probably won't be able to do because that's something that they haven't been groomed to do. They might not be cut out to make progress of that nature, but they'll get into it for the ego and the fame because that's just a, you know, that's that's the personality of the right. world. That's why I think it's more important to document the process today. It's right. very important. Because, you know, in China, they already have uh, articles where they have to put whether it's human or AI, right? Facts. And companies are already deciding to get rid of writers and utilize AI. Right. And so there's a value, though, of it being a human being, right? It's like if, let's say they utilize AI, because I know they've been having the, uh, the viral clips of they taking Drake voice and creating songs. Right, right. But 
there's no true spirit in that. So there's no true value in it, right? right? The value of listening to something that's microwave, it's the McDonald's of music, right? But the reality of it is, is one of the things that we value in music is the capacity for the human mind to come up with things, right? I like, like, like freestyling right. would be more valuable right. because you would have to actually see the human mind work in real time, correct? Right. Versus, we don't know if AI made that in the in the studio. You could perform it, but we don't know who did that. So right. it's like, the, to me, there's certain things that would become more valuable. The live experience of seeing the human mind actually work because it's gonna be a lot of these digital brilliant people, but they can't implement that in real life, right? right? So now you take that person and you say, well, can you do a lecture in front of the world? And maybe they can't, mm -hmm. right? Or you asking them free flowing questions and their brain can't think and make connections because right. they don't have that natural intelligent processor. Right. right? Nazis are not connected. No, they're not fired. You like, wait a minute, or other, you just wrote this brilliant book. You can't answer that question. Right. Right. So it's going to be a lot of, you know, wait a minute. I don't know if we should book them. Right. Right. Because if, if somebody, you know, and, and that's the whole thing. Like if 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 you download my voice and they say, well, I'm going to make a, a hit song, but I'm going to do it like 19 keys and it sound good. But when I go perform, I can't I can't hit them same kind of notes. I can't flow in that same pattern or rhythm. Right. right? It's going to make people starting to look at you a little eyeball. You feel me? So. I believe that there's going to be an increase in value in the human experience of all things. Definitely. Right? Because we're going to be able to get access to new songs, new movies, new music, new books. But once this stuff is all created, who going to listen to it and who going to read it? Correct. You can go create whatever you want to today, but you still have to get people to read it. And that process of developing trust, that process of developing experience, people appreciate that. That's the value of it. Right. Right. So you have to be careful going in and just creating and being like, hey, I showed up with it. And it today you can create a book and it says how to crack the human mind and be the greatest version of yourself. And if I look at you and I don't see the greatest version of yourself, I don't right. want your book. Right. Right. So it's going to be more important that now everybody have the same access tools, but the person that sells it to you. That's key. Now, in the world right now, Everybody's utilizing open AI to create software. Right. We don't actually know who it is. So there is a value already there of utilizing the software to create specific use case and tasks for AI that people can utilize to better their lives. Of course. Right? But in the future, I believe, this is my theory, you can give me your thought process on it, that the most important thing for people is going to be about who's behind it. Right? Because nobody, imagine if, AI creates a whole entire business and has human beings working for them. It's creating the order flow. It does the business. It does the marketing, right? It even got robots calling you. You think these are real people, right? There's going to be something weird about having a whole entire business owned by a, a, a artificial entity, right? So right. people will be like, I'm not buying into that. But then they made it so damn good. I don't know. I might have to. Right. You know, like AI go be cooking better than white people. So if if, if I go to a to an AI restaurant and it got the burgers and it's whipping up the spices like the big or auntie, that's going better to, to the to the no sauce seasoning users. You feel that right to the to the potato salad with the raisins of it. <laughs> now, for this share something with you, kids. Um, currently, China with a population of how many billion? That's one of the most AI integrated societies on the planet. Uh, they're fully integrated into AI technology to the point where they have smart everyday, right? Uh, they also have a social credit system that's intricately linked into AI. Uh, they're able to read your, 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 your biometrics, eye scans, body movement, they're utilizing pre-cog open air, right? So they're able to utilize predictive analysis, predictive technology, but that's also what Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, Google, and all of these platforms that have been selling our data for many, many years, that is also what they're doing as well. They're utilizing predictive um, analytics, you know, predictive data, they're able to link up with advertisers and predict, you know, your buying habits. Right. 
currently there are a slew of Instagram influencers that are AI, right? One of the one of the one of the uh, the progenitors of that is a melanated model, mm. right? And then is they have a Japanese model. They have AI models for all nationalities with billions of followers, and they're doing Prada runway shows. You feel me? They got Bergen bags. You know what I mean? They got Louis campaigns. You know, uh, big businesses are doing big business with AI, right? Um, we live in a world where our society has been groomed from birth to reward microwavable culture. Mm -hmm. This is the latest iteration of microwavable culture, soulless music, mm -hmm. right? Uh, soulless, like lifeless, or not lifeless, but soulless entities, right? So as you were saying earlier, that the value of somebody with a soul should go higher now. And I would say we would have to do a reset on values. It has to be a correction on our value system. You feel me? Our value system is completely upside down right now. We're not, you know, the people who are valuable are not valued. Those who are not valued are valued, right? We don't have the right, it's, it has to be corrected. It has to be a correction. So people who has real skill sets could be assessed and be like, nah, that's a $10 billion person right there. That's a fact. You feel me? That's a $10 billion person right there. If Little Wayne is getting a buck fifty for a walkthrough, then Key should get three hundred thousand. That's readjusting the values in our culture to where, whereas we're valuing people who don't contribute anything to the culture in terms of creation, inventions, right? By showing hands, who can name five melanated inventors? But I bet you know who was running dope in the seventies, right? Bumpy. You know, uh, uh, you know, uh, what's my dude from New York City, from Harlem? Uh, Frank Lucas, you know, you feel me? Uh, the dude that snitched, uh, one of the top ones. We know all of them because it's been implanted in our subconscious, right? It's been hammered into our minds through media, through barbershops, conversations, word of mouth, jail stories and everything but we don't value, you don't even know who the creator of the internet is. We don't know his name right off the top of our head. He's melanated. You feel me? We don't know who made the cell phone. You know, we're, we're not giving them value. Uh, uh, we just, a few of us just got Apple Order George Washington Carver and all of his contributions to life. We don't know who invented the traffic light. You feel me? The radiator. There's, there's a list of melanated inventors and it goes over 100 of us. And the majority of that took place in the 1800s. They don't teach us these names though. They, they don't beat that into our heads, but they teach us about everybody else. So when we begin to see ourselves at a different level of value, did yes, you know, the artist who, who, could, who could make you cry he'll have more value in this space. Right. You feel me? The artist who could make you think, the artist can make you feel. I just saw a movie the other day, Avatar 2. I had on 3D glasses, and there was the scene of Baby Cry. Oh, uh, what's the And scene the characters were CGI. Oh, what scene was I mean, a spoiler alert. There was a scene where one of the, one of the main characters uh, died, one of the main characters' son. And the way they set it up, it was a tearjerker. And I was like, damn, George Cameron, how do you get that? That was CGI, and I'm over here. I got this 3D, so it's really in my face, and I'm feeling it. It killed the, they killed the computer, but I was feeling it. So I was like, wow, he was able to do that? So I see that, and then I see people saying, yeah, you know, the thing with the AI is that it, it can't elicit feelings from people because it's so, ro uh, so robotic and mechanic. But I'm like, shit, somebody's out there figuring some things out, man. The AI probably will be able to do it better because the, the AI will be directly primed to focus and understand human behavior. Right. You understand me? Like, 
Here's the thing. I want to kind of think about all the different ways that AI can be utilized. And, and one way, use cases. Hey, yeah, use cases. Right. And there's so many, right? Like, it, once AI becomes, you know, uh, fully operatable in society, everything has to change, right? right? Because the way you go about solving a problem will now be assisted and enhanced. Because right, you have human beings with our natural intelligence going about solving our problems. Let's say black America, right? One of our issues is financial literacy. Right. Right. And so being able to come up with customized education and financial literacy tests that take into accountability our learning disabilities, right? Studying a person patterns, spending habits, right? And creating individually though. Individually. Right. And creating auto AI suggestions. So let's say you're about to spend some money. AI hits you with a notification. You know this is gonna make you broke, right? Right. You understand me? Like you know this is not a good investment. This is not an asset. Right. So therefore, AI can automatically come up with another suggestion or say, AI, let me know when I'm not spending with black people. Right. So AI says that, OK, every time you ask AI for a business suggestion, it automatically maps you to a black business. Right. A plug in on the website. So we create one of these, a plug in on the website that automatically goes towards black businesses when you look up something. Right. So when you're going into Amazon, now the only thing is you would need to have a registry on the blockchain so you can make sure that the identity is actually a black person. Right. Because therefore, if I'm going to Amazon and I want to buy some light bulbs, I want to buy whatever it is, automatically go make so sure filter it. it filters out right. all of the non-black people and it goes directly to black business. Fact. Which means that we have $1.8 trillion spending power. It's going up consistently. But now we utilize an AI assistance to enhance that ability to circulate the dollar within the black community, right? Yeah. So the spending p habits that we have, whether you got AI to say, cut me off, you understand me, anytime I'm overspending. So we can have a no tricking rule. You understand me? Listen, AI knows you ain't know her that long. <laughs> <laughs> AI hit you with the y'all, y'all just met. Right. Chill. <laughs> you try to spend over 50, go on the to live it. You know what I'm so, right. so AI, uh, like, it, it's the customization to actually meet the goals where AI is helping you actually, you know, restrict oh, certain habits so it forces you to get to certain goals. Oh, definitely. Right? And so they utilize the AI like this in, in, in education right now in China for learning disabilities to help customize, you know, education curriculums uh, for the student. And so right. my big thing is I talk with Kaba. And I'm telling them about customization versus generalization. Right. So AI will allow us to get to a very customized society to where you can enhance yourself based on you. Right. Right. So in school, the best place, is, you know, school is a super scam system. Right. Um, the way you know, the things that we taught in school, it's not about what we taught us about what we're not taught, which is the biggest issue. Fact. Right. Is that it's not that you're learning chemistry or you're learning pie and all of this history. It's the things that they're particularly left out on purpose, right? Now, uh, AI literacy. will be a, a much better teacher than the teachers that are there now. Definitely. Right? But here's the thing, though. Of course, you can't take out the full human element because there's going to be a generation that's just going to be raised by AI, right? The same way there's a generation raised by the internet, generation raised by YouTube, generation right. raised by TikTok. Those are dangerous. Right. When you take out the masculine and feminine principles of the human development, you can create a more sociopathic society. Right. right? Where lack human intelligence, lack e emotional intelligence, rather. Right. But these use cases can be good. They can be used in, let's say, we deal with police terrorism and brutality. Right. right. Creating systems that make police super accountable. Right. And every single thing that they do that restricts them from. You know, making certain moves like like let's 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 come up with a way right here, right now that AI can be utilized, right, to end police brutality. To end the deadly force and the police the terrorism. Right. Because right. If, if you got your, your camera automatically connected, right. There's ways that, you know, that information can be automatically uploaded into a public channel. Right. Understand me? There there's ways where the police that you encounter, the information between the person that has the encounter and the police officers, both those encounters can be logged, right? Where there's accountability of knowing that, you know, same way a cell phone gets pinged if you commit a crime, they know exactly where your location is. There's apps already that like send your information out to let you know you're dealing with a police officer. Fact. But it can be AI that's automatic. You ain't gotta press nothing. 
This person is in close proximity with police officers, right? That app can turn on directly and they can hear, right, certain issues and that can alert, right, uh, a community program that says, wait a minute, y'all need to go oversee and survey this because right. like a brother was kidnapped and beaten to death, right? And then just things that were, you don't actually have to come in contact with the human being. Right. Right. Now, of course, the question is, or, or, or the thing about these things, they're inevitable. So it's not that I suggest that society goes AI. The reality of it is, it's going AI. No, it's so, here. Here. yeah, it's here. So having inputs, right, and something that's already being outputted in society is the key to it, right? If we look at the statistic in every community around the world, specifically in black neighborhoods, we would look at, you know, uh, the murder rate, right? Yeah. So let's say the murder rate is at, let's say, you know, a thousand per year in any, you know, bad given city. Right. So the AI will automatically come up with processes and programs to decrease the murder rate by taking right. a look at the data of what's happening. Right. It can look at the finances involved in the people, the education levels that's involved, the officers that's in certain areas. So it can automatically bench officers that will be more prone towards violent behavior. Right. Right. So therefore, the AI will be assistant to police to police. Right? right. Now, this would have to be something implemented by independent technologists. Right. Then lobby to make sure that if you're going to be out there, it changes the system when a person says that y'all had this encounter with this police officer. Now it's getting logged by the AI. Now the AI decides to take you off the street because it's going to do an analysis based on the person you're going to come encounter with, the issues in your own life, the things that have been encountered. Right. It can let you know whether that police officer was prone to greed, whether that police officer was prone to violence, all of those different things. Right. right? And so it basically will make sure that this encounter is too dangerous for y'all to have. You may be stopping them over for a ticket. But this actually, based on our analysis, end up in a death, right? right? So therefore, you do not have permission to do this stop. Right. Instead of they're utilizing AI to run license plate and to figure out a reason why they're going to arrest you, AI says that, nope, based on the parameters of danger, we can't allow this to happen. This is high on our brutality meter. Right. Big alert. Big alert. <laughs> and that is a beautiful assessment. And, um, and that's just off the dog. Right. And I could definitely see that as um, a factor that somebody out here can create. You know, one of the great things that I was saying earlier about the times that we're in is that, you know, we could create whatever we can think at this point, right? If we understand what API is and then approach the API, Right, and say, all right, because there's, there's a whole list of APIs that are available. Well, for those who don't know what an API, can you give them right there? That would be basic. Okay, so let me use an example of how API works so we can have a basic understanding of what the opportunity is that awaits. By show of hands, how many people utilize the Linza app when it came out? The app where they ask you to put your face, upload the pictures of your face, and everybody on your timeline had these AI artwork pictures, right? So the API or the open source that Linza was using, right, was the API from Midjourney or Stable Diffusion, one of the diffusion models, right? So the API is the open source, meaning that you could build the same, you could build an app that utilizes that technology for your benefits, right? So you may say, I want to make an app is gonna turn people when they upload their picture into, you know, gods and goddesses, right? So you go, you get a developer, or the coder, they tweak the API, you know, and you license it, put it underneath your app, and then boom, you have yourself an asset, a digital asset that could potentially make you billions of dollars if you're in it entrepreneur-wise, or if you're a social entrepreneur and you just wanna affect things and your society and whatnot, you'll develop technology that's going to aid and assist you in that. So, you know. And that stands for Application Programming Interface. Yes, Application Programming Interface. It is something that I highly suggest that many of us look into because it can change your life if you get on it and build out some type of asset. There are real ways that you could take idea and, or ideation into concept take it from concept into prototype by utilizing, by outsourcing and utilizing, because you don't have to know everything. You just got to have the idea. Just start with the idea. There's people that will build it out for you. So I am a huge proponent of uh, think tanks, you know, uh, mastermind sessions, you know, uh, especially amongst brilliant minds such as yourselves right now, so we could sit down and solve these 99 problems that we have as a people. And because we have 99 opportunities now or 99 potentialities right now to level up what, what we have in front of us, we could solve a lot of issues that we're facing without even having to turn to artificial intelligence for the answer. We could run our solutions through AI, right, to test it, okay? 
and then we could start building it out. Because if we can identify a problem, now we can identify the solution with it, with the technology. Now, that's key what you say, the, the identifying or the ability to test, right? The ability to test. To test theory, to take things through. Because if, if you look at, you know, like imagine, you know, Martin Luther King or Malcolm X having AI, right? And they say, well, this is what I want to do. This is a strategy that I want to run on the police, right? We'll go out there, protest. We're going to utilize this to create a bad image and media and press. And then we're going to utilize that press to be able to go to this politician and get what we want in this particular bill. Right. That AI, you, you run that through AI, you give them the full flesh of what the strategy is. And AI spit like, ah, the only problem with that is this. The person that you're dealing with, he's a devout racist. He's not going to care about that. There's going to be more pressures from the lobby dollars that's connect. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's giving you ability to test it. Right. Black America being having the ability to test our solutions real time and come up with answers to our problems. Because right. the original, like I say, in our community, the AI is the scholars, right? The scholars that lead us, that give us multiple solutions to a problem. Yeah, the master teacher, the thought leaders. Right. Yeah. And so our real issue, and this is what I really want to get to people to really understand, is that it's not a lack of intelligentsia in our community. That's never been our problem. It's not a lack of solutions. It's not a lack of creative thinking. None of that. It's a lack of taking action, right? Right. Execution. The, the great separator today that we're going to see in society, because you got a lot of people who put so many excuses in front of themselves, but now AI say, I, you ain't got no excuses, right? right? So now you're going to be tested to see you are who you think you are. Mm. You are who you say you are. Right. When AI sits out there, and they say, well, listen, what you want to do? You sit down there, you type it out, AI give you a step-by-step. Step. Yeah, yeah. Now, what are you going to do with this knowledge and information? Right. So that means now you have to figure out whether you have the willfulness, the determination, the drive, the grit, the passion, right, to actually go produce that action. Right. So instead, a lot of people go sit down there, man, AI, show me how to build this billion-dollar business. Boom, AI. Spit it out all, everything you need to do, the marketing, the branding, the content, correct. I mean, everything, budget, all of this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Then you will go watch Netflix right out. <laughs> <laughs> right, you get the dopamine from the output. Right. Right? And just for, uh, you know, just for, um, I'm going to throw it out there, then when we see .io, Right, all these new websites that are popping up, dot .io, dot .io, that's input, output, right? So these new programs that we're interfacing with is about input. You input a prompt and it outputs a result, right? It generates a prompt, an idea, something from your mind, a thought that came out of nowhere, something that's personal to you, right? And it will give you an output that may be personal to you. That holds a lot of weight, you feel me? So a result of that is going to be people who are going to approach the technology and not utilize what is known as, you know, moderation, as we do with so many things in our life, right? Look at what they did to shrooms. Right. It was for healing and medicine, and now it's a party uh, 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 type of thing, right? They took it out of moderation and they overindulge. So what happened with social media? Social media was something used to be leveraged into what is known as social networking, but many of us never even experienced social networking. We stuck on social media. We don't even know what it is to build a community. Social networking, we don't even know what it is to get paid by utilizing social media. We just stuck in social media, and if we took that, not moderate, not, not moderately, we made that an addiction. So AI, if utilized the wrong way, it will definitely become an addiction. What do we do with gaming? We turn gaming into addictions, right? We're not even making games up to this point. Nintendo, Sega, all of them been out. They need five uh, melanated owned a video game conglomerates, right? We playing all of these games, but we not building near one of them. We, we, we don't even know the technology that it takes to get into building a game. That's been disrupted. Now you could build games at, at, at not even half the price, maybe at 70% less of the price at this point. 
because you could go to chat GPT and if you know the right prompts, it'll give you a whole goddamn code on how to make uh, your, the best game, uh, a Grand Theft Auto, a NBA 2K, all of those have codes, all of those have source code, all, and then you, there's ways to find all of that now. Then you could tweak it, and then you could go to chat GPT, and you could feed it an idea about a video game that you want to create, then you could write the code for that, then you could go to a developer, or the place like freelancer.com, fiverr.com, uh, Upwork or whatever, pay the price, pay the ticket, and then your ass got you a game coming. How about that? It might not be triple A graphics, but you got to start somewhere. You know what I'm saying? The people that made Angry Bird made a few billions of dollars before they exited the stage left. Right? And so the approach to AI goes all the way back to what we were saying earlier. Almighty intelligence, right? You mount the machine. You don't allow the machine to mount you. You approach the machine in a place where you have to know that this thing is like a, a, a piece of burden that works for you. You don't work for it. Okay, and with that approach, and when you approach it with a purpose, you'll that you won't get sucked into the, uh, you know that 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 rabbit hole that people approach things that don't even know what they're approaching. You know, told him out. That's like giving a two-year-old a Ferrari, and say, yo, just go ahead and, and take a spin. You know, they got spin out. So if you get handed this powerful technology and you don't have an idea about how to utilize it in the way of an evolutionary or solutionary, you more than likely might spin out. You feel me? And, I, and it's being done right now and I've seen it and we're gonna see a lot more of it. So, you know, y'all are in a very um, advantageous place right now because the information that the brothers are gonna lay on you He's going to produce almighty intelligence. And then you're going to be able to interface with the technology and you're going to be able to bend the proverbial spoon. You feel me? But it's not going to happen from a mind state of a person who can't even look in the mirror to see greatness. You know, that's why the fear campaign about AI is so strong because they just want you to stay as consumers. They don't want us to have that in our hands and understand the power of it. They're going to put you in a fear campaign. But yeah. and, it, and it has to be polarized. It has to be. So it's like either fear or addiction. Right. right. Because if you just like it, you might never use it. Right. right. They have to create the antagonist, protagonist. There has to be a fear factor. It, 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 and that's creating emotion connection. Right. right. That's, why it's, that's why it went viral. Right. That's the fear of the forbidden fruit. Right. You know, and you gotta try it. You gotta take your bite like 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 Eve did. You feel me? You gotta see what it's like. Right. And then once you utilize it, you do realize like this is my greatest research tool. Right? And so as the BBL for the non intellectual, people want that enhancement. They gonna get that again. Right. But I wanna talk right. about <laughs> I wanna talk about three things. I wanna talk about props more. I wanna talk about shrooms. Right. right? And I wanna talk about addiction. Right. Right? Because I think all of these kind of play into different factors, right? Right. Technological addiction, first of all, right? Right. Now, I was just looking up, like, how do you create, come up with a formula to help cure technological addiction? Yes. Now, number one, we all know is about setting limits, right? Definitely. I was talking, who was I talking to? What was we at? It was talking about looking at somebody's screen time. Right. And seeing how much time that they use for it was about men looking at a woman's screen time. Boy, she got too much screen time. She had no time for you. Mm -hmm. You understand me? She's too much in that world. Right. right. And in that world, you're over comparing yourself. There's envy. There's jealousy. There's not the level of just being in joy and appreciation and gratitude. Right. Right. And so you can be with somebody in the greatest relationship in the world, but they're comparing this one to something else. Right. Well, you gave me a house. And a Lamborghini, right. but I didn't get the new G wagon. I ain't get the you know what I'm saying? Oh, right. I didn't got the new. I ain't got the new little uh, dog uh, right. that's right. out there. Yeah. You right. feel me? There's always something new to be compared instead of embracing, being in right. joy, being right. grace in the moment. So you know, fellas out there, you know, look at look at the woman's screen time. You understand me? It's true. 
Ladies, at the same time, look at the feather screen time. That screen time has to be decreased. And there's literally tools where you can set limits on that screen time to make sure you're not overindulgent because addiction in any factor takes away from their ability to love you, right? And so I talked about it earlier with the students, addiction is not particularly a bad thing. Right. I asked the question, have you ever been addicted to, or not addict, not addiction, but uh, obsession? Obsession. Right? Right. Let me ask you, have you ever been obsessed about a woman? Yes. Come on, they real, man. I asked the brothers earlier, they act like, they talking about no, I, like, you ain't live life, here. you ain't live life unless you've been obsessed. And, it, and whether right. you was young, I told them, you know, first woman I was obsessed though was Holly Berry. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I you? know she broke your heart a thousand times, oh, but she be acting up. Man, man, by that time I had a new obsession, right? right. <laughs> you know, uh, but but it's real though because obsession gives you the quality to feel, right? To feel and to go after things with the passion, super good. right. And so there's some oh, people man. don't know what passion is like. They've right. never been obsessed over a thing, so they're not passionate about goals, not passionate about life. They're not passionate about nothing, right? To be able to concentrate that passion, right? That's the superpower, right? That turns into concentration, right? And now you can go after, you can obsess about being greater, about developing yourself, about having all the things that you want, about your own potential. That's the ability. But a person that's already addicted to one thing, they can't be addicted to their own self-development, right? Because they would do anything for that thing that gives them that feeling. I would say that addiction gets in the way of obsession. Absolutely. They're not the same. Mm. So you could be obsessed about improving yourself, but your addiction to porn, mm. right? Your addiction to eating unhealthy. Mm -hmm. Your addiction to being a warrior instead of a warrior, that shit is not trip you up. And but it in a way. It's funny that you mentioned porn because I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of AI porn that's gonna be popping up. Oh, uh, let, let, don't let me start talking about what's going on in that world. We go, we go, we go. Add that into the element of the conversation as well in a second. But on, on this technological addiction, so setting limits is key number one. Right, right. Um, so that you can curtail some of your addictions and obsessions. Right, right. Find alternative activities. Right. So in these alternative activities, there are many things you can do in life. When somebody heard, they was like, "What else is there to do?" Right. <laughs> There's some people. <laughs> You think about technology as life. You take a child's, you know, iPad away, a phone away, they don't know how to live, right? And so by not having that, you have no balance in life, right? Like, even taking a simple walk without your phone is, a, is something you can do because we lose our observatory powers. Right. Right, once we stop becoming high-level observers, we stop being able to apply meaning. We stop being able to see change. We stop being able to see patterns, right? So this is part of our natural intelligence process. Human beings had to be high level observers to not be controlled by what you see, but to control what you see. Yes. Right. To be able to just go into the park, to be able to do art and not just mid journey art where you're typing in a prompt. But like I do art. Right. I start trying to get me a big old post. I'm about to sell some some stuff for tens of thousands this year. He has to me as an artist. Not artificial generated, no disrespect to that. Yeah. Singular art. Yeah, yeah, we got there. I'm just, I'm just, uh, this is this is me <laughs> promoing right now, brother. <laughs> no, but it, but it's key, you know, working out, like find alternative activities, you know, that is self development, reading, right, right, um, and then another one, practicing mindfulness. Mindfulness is the biggest thing for me right now because you know, I have so many tabs open in my brain. Right. Right. And so mindfulness is like closing all the tabs to focus on what's in front of me. Right. And guess what? When I do that, it increases my processing speed. I right. notice everything about it. Nothing. Everything gets logged in. Everything gets downloaded. Mm -hmm. Right. It's meditation. Right. It's, it's synchronizing yourself into the moment. You can feel the air around you. Right. You're noticing your heart beating. You're imagining your blood streaming throughout your body. You ask yourself, what am I doing? And am I good at it? And you can go further. Why am I doing it? All of these brings awareness to self. And right? Home, right. And that practice of awareness brings your whole mind into play. Your left and your right hemisphere are operating correctly. You're not missing things. Right. You're on point and on target. Right. Your brain is more adapted to defend itself against suggestion, offend itself against manipulation. Right. You're not the red flags. Right. So. 
you know, but when you are addicted to something, all that goes out the window, right? You don't have self-awareness. You have awareness on something else and you want that and it controls your job drive and you become a slave to it. Fact. So decrease in technological addiction increases self-mastery, it does. right? And another thing, because some people, theirs might be so bad that they got to seek professional help, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where, whether that professional help is literally asking family, seeking a therapist, because you might need therapy just for social media. I'm not talking about for all your other issues, <laughs> just, just social media. I mean, you just mentioned uh, an income stream, right? Going back to what I was saying about being problem solvers. So where's the Betty Ford Clinic for people that are addicted to their phones? Where's the, where's the addiction center for non-productive, you know, um, entrepreneurs who want to make it happen, but you can't wake up at 5 a.m., right? You want to make it happen, but you can't put your phone down. You, you want to make it happen, but you're a procrastinator. Your ass need to go to a clinic for about 30 to 60 days to tighten you, tighten you up. Man, that just scares me. You feel me? I'm just saying. That's like a horror movie plot right there. <laughs> what you were saying, everything that you were saying about balance, right? Because I was not as, when you were saying, I was like, yeah, he's so come out. We, we, we lack balance. Yeah. So going back to what I was saying about almighty intelligence, right? That's the name of the book, right? So what almighty intelligence is speaking about is before we get to face with artificial intelligence, before we go down that rabbit hole, before we put our energy in front of these computers early in the morning, right, or early in the rising, there should be a routine that we should be indulging in, right, as high-level thinkers, right, as almighty intelligence. There needs to be a level of grounding taking place. You feel me? Taking the socks off, going into either the backyard or wherever you have soil or whatnot, being able to ground with the earth. There should be some sun gazing taking place, being able to look at the rising sun through either left or right eye or whatnot. You dig what I'm saying? Being able to get yourself some vitamin D, charging up your body. Uh, I used to make jokes about tree huggers until I did the knowledge about the electrons and how you could increase your uh, electron voltage in your body by hugging a tree. How you could offset negative energy. Let's just say that you got something rotting you. Let's say that you have uh, negative energy on you. Let's say that you have a succubus on you. You go and how you you go and hug a tree, right? The tree will pick up your your levels and whatnot. There are people who are walking around. And they're, they're, they're operating at certain levels that will be considered to be zombies or dead, right? Their voltage is at a level where they're, they're, be, they're, they're giving birth to cancer and whatnot because they don't have high voltage, right? So you have to do the research about, you know, what it is that you're doing to strip your electrons, what it is that you're doing to strip your voltage because once it's operating at such a low level, right? You, that, that, that's when the parasite starts to take over, right? And the parasites are inside of you. So they start sending out all of these signals. Yo, go get the cheeseburger. Yo, go watch this. Yo, go watch World Star. Watch another person get shot in the head and whatnot. You know, it trauma bonds. Parasites trauma bond with other parasites. They send out fur homes. They're attracted to one another. You know what I'm saying? So all of these offsets, we have to be able to offset before we sit in front of this black mirror. You feel me? Because as we've seen, it's something, with whatever algorithm they were able to tweak through social media over the past few years, it has ramped up suicides, right? It has ramped up anxiety. It has ramped up depression. It has ramped up non-productivity. People don't even want to do nothing. They just want to sit on the computer comparing themselves all day, right? So if we, if we are to break that, it's not AI that's going to be able to break it. They're just giving you a new level of devil if you don't know how to approach it. So before we approach it, we got to master ourselves, lower self, higher self. There are levels to this that we could do. There's regimens that we could follow. 
You dig what I'm saying? It's not difficult. It is not difficult. You feel me? If you if you were into anything in life, any type of sports where you practice any forms of discipline, this doesn't sound weird to you. This is something that we should all understand. So some yoga, some stretching, some breathing work. You dig what I'm saying? Some mellow music and the, the rising and whatnot before we jump in front of these computers and whatnot. And then sometimes you got to give yourself a time limit. All right, I will go in for three hours. You know, the same alarm is set that it goes off and is waking you up. It's going to have to go off and tell you get off of that computer. Then you might go play with your seeds and whatnot. Or you might go outside to take a walk. You might forest bathe. Where I live in Atlanta, there's forest behind my house and whatnot. There's a whole forest trail, right? So like he said, it, 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 I can't put my phone down sometimes. I got to fight myself. But then when I'm able to put it down, I put it in a box. I just close the box. And I'll go and, and, you know, after a while I stop thinking about it and I'm listening to frogs, crickets, you know what I'm saying, hummingbirds and whatnot. And then I'm in that matrix. So now I'm charged up. And when I go back to my phone, I'm invigorated. I feel a certain kind of way because I'm like, I feel good that I gave myself a few hours for my body, for my vehicle. Because I know that there's a voice that's to not telling me, yo, you effing up if I'm in the forest. But if I'm in front of the computer all day and I'm just throwing it all the way in front of this black mirror, there's these alerts that keep popping up. It's like, fam, you don't think you want to get up and do something? You, you know, the ancestors is watching you. Right. You know what I mean? Like, there's all of these guilt trips going off. These alerts and notifications. I'm closing them and ignoring them. I'm, I'm coming up with reasons why. Nah, that ain't real. Let me just stay, you know what I mean? Let me stay stuck in front of this stream. So, yes, moderation. And you're going to unlock some things because I promise you, with a clear mind, that's the cheat code. Have you ever been down a rabbit hole on the internet where you was just, you was running into treasures? It was almost like you was on a treasure hunt. You were in your websites that you never seen before. You know what I mean? It's like a, it's like a video game. You get the value of coins and whatnot. Your ass is spotted. You know what I mean? Coins is popping out. You know what I mean? That happens when you're in a flow state, but that flow state is 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 set off when your mind is more clear up. You can't do all of that with all of that weight and that excess and all of that heaviness on you. You got to get rid of that. So grounding, if you don't do anything, just take your shoes off and just put your feet in the soil and whatnot. Do a little a little bit of breathing. Look at the sun and have some gratitude. Right. Have some gratitude. Say thank you for the opportunities that are arising through technology, through business, through finances and all of these other things. And, you know, because you were bringing it up earlier about financial literacy and whatnot. And I, I, I want to add on that, you know, in the past few years, you know, from 2020 up to where we are right now, there's been a whole revolution or evolution in our community where people uh, you know, during the pandemic and whatnot, they started getting everything rants. At a time when shit was going wrong, there was a contingency of us that started getting everything right. You was making money selling shit that you wanted to sell. Elderberry, Seamoss, you curing people, you doing hair, you know what I mean? The brothers, they started their clothing line. You feel me? They started picking up, they fired their boss and whatnot. That was the great resignation, right? Because we were doing things for self. We were discovering our power. And I'm here to let you know, nothing has changed. It only 10 x It only 10 x if you're still on that pod state. So if you're on a pod state of financial literacy, you could approach this new technology and look at it like it only has 10 x You feel me? The difference between AI and what we saw with NFTs and what we saw with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency, this is a little more tangible. This has more use cases. You could touch this shit. You feel me? A lot of that you couldn't necessarily touch and the learning curve on this side is that as much as it was with those. But those are intricate, intricately related. And as this year progresses, you're going to see when AI is introduced to Web3, Another 1,000 of income streams are going to be born.
Peace, family. The block represents the blockchain. There's new technology that allows us to create a completely new world, to upend the existing systems and create our own structures. Our parents had that opportunity, our grandparents had that opportunity. No other generation had that opportunity since the Constitution was created, since the banking system was created, since the education and the media systems was created. But our generation have that opportunity that if we learn and if we educate ourselves, we can create the world that best fits us in our image, to where you can take the bottom and you can rise them to the top. Then the world is a representation of your knowledge, your ideas, the things that you know, those concepts that define your belief system, how you see, perceive, live, sense, and feel about the world. And order is the first law of the universe because nothing can be done without order. We want to help you get the knowledge, get the technology, and get the community within your life so that you can have a foundation to be able to build on so that your family has a last name that is worth something. I'm 19 Keys. Make sure y'all tap into the block world order. So speaking of new income streams, right? There are a lot of people selling mushrooms. Yeah. Exactly. Right? The psychedelic industry right, is growing because it's becoming legal in a lot of states. The first place it became legal was in Oakland, California, actually. Yeah, it's down business. Funny enough, that's what crack was actually pushed out of as well. Right. So we have a long history of drugs being pushed out of Oakland. Right. Now, the way, the reason I bring it up, though, because, you know, the psychedelic, you, you have some experience on the psychedelic journey on the other right. You said Dr. Savy gave you your first psychedelics, man. Fast. Which is, a, yeah, which is a dope thing to brag about. Um, now, when I think of it today, psychedelics have you thinking abstract, right? Right. It can have you going on a trip where you're not operating from that same system of thought that you normally are flowing on from that pattern and you're jumping. Your brain is saying, that, no, let me, let me, let me pull from all of this linguistic part. Let me pull from this experience. Let me pull from this memory. Mm -hmm. Right. And then by the time you're done with that experience it's bonded back together, you got a new way to think. Right. Mm -hmm. And so. When I was thinking of like mycelium networks versus artificial intelligence networks, right? Right, right. Now, mycelium networks are natural, right? They're an intelligent network. An intelligent network. 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 They're one of the oldest networks, if not the net oldest network in the world. Before there were social media networks, there were mycelium networks. Super fast. Right? They're learning from each other, pulling food from each other, nutrition. If one spot is uh, uh, um, lacks something, Lack the other one can pull, cool, right? right? And so in that way, they're similar to how artificial intelligence learns, right? right. Through the process learns. of development. Mm -hmm. Because artificial intelligence is mimicry and not just human intelligence, but organism intelligence all together. Right. Right. And so as we're going through these new ages, I want to create a correlation between the psychedelic age we headed into, right? This new psychedelic age, because we had it in the 70s, but 70s, they didn't have technology. So what does a psychedelic age look like at the same time, during the burst of the artificial intelligence age. Well, funny it does, when you do the research on the rise of AI or the discovery of AI, it coincides with all of the tests that would be done in your right, right around Oakland, Silicon Valley, with LSD and shrooms, mm. psychedelics. Right? Right around the same time in the 50s. Okay? So, with shrooms becoming legalized in Oregon, I mean, I mean and then Oakland. Oakland, which will also affect the, uh, the, uh, the engineers, the developers, and all of the people at Silicon Valley who go on our record saying, you know, we go on retreats. You know what I mean? We not only microdose all day, but we go on these retreats and we're doing 10 grams, we're going in, we're deep diving, and we're coming back with concepts and we're implementing that and we're feeding it to our R&D departments, research and development. And here it is, you're having this new technology, these new apps and all of these new applications and whatnot. Do you think, before you finish that thought, do you think it's also an aspect that, you know, human complacency comes from that point where you don't know your value anymore? 
Right. Like when AI takes and steals a lot of people's jobs, there was a lot of people that connected their passion and their drive to their career. Fact. And so that feeling of, of loss, right, of not knowing what your purpose is, what is life all about. A lot of human beings will have a lot of extra time on their hand. You understand me? And so what we do, you know, when you got that extra time is you go into recreation, right? Recreational drug use. And right. so rediscovering ideas on what is the purpose of life. Right. I don't think that there's any coincidences in life, right? Of course, they're now trying to figure out where can, you know, we go get new sources of income. But at the same time, you think about virtual reality, augmented reality. That is the same thing as a psychedelic experience, right? When you think about, you know, augmented reality creating projections of things and right. the way that you have a, a visual experience with something versus the synapses in the brain that get fired when you during a psychedelic experience. Right. And this psychedelic experience will enhance the virtual experience. Right. Make you feel completely connected and immersed inside this world. Ooh, right. Yeah. And so it's dangerous, though, because when you do that, and you add in the drugs, you add in the ideas of MK Orchard, add in Alan Turing, right? right. You, you right. add in the drug ages and why they brought in psychedelics in the 70s at first to stop the revolution when people started thinking about politics too much. They started thinking about Marxism and different government controls. And, 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 and so now the people was revolting. The rebellion was starting, right? right? And so it's kind of like the famous Anne-Marie, when they're hungry, give them cake. Instead, when they revolt, give them drugs, right? Right. And so a world addicted is not focusing on true freedom, but also a world addicted it w at that time was harder to control because they did not have the AI, right? So now we can't get a hippie to go get a job, <laughs> right? They like, no, dude, everything is free, right? Right, right. So that, a big crystal. they didn't mind being homeless, right? Living at the earth, man. Right, right. right? But now, you know, being a, a, a homeless hippie don't hit the same, right? right? But I want to see how it changes societal communal structures, uh, how human beings connect with each other. You got people, you know, uh, uh, basically AI when it comes in, if people fear it, it's a new God. If people worship it, it's a new God, right? right. Everything that comes as worship and fear it creates a new God. It creates, of course, it creates religion, right? It right. creates obsession. It creates all of these different things around it. And so I think it's imperative to take very high level observations of all the things that's happening at once. Cause human beings have gone through so many changes at once. You got your eye on this corner, then this thing is popping up. Then you gotta look up, man, what's, what's going on up here, you right? So we have to be processing at such a high speed, right. right? When you talk about that almighty intelligence, I think that that's high power and that's dope because human beings are entering this new age, right? And so we have to evolve in order to be able to process all. Now, mm -hmm. melanin is such a supercomputer of intelligence and that molecule has the ability of, of multifunctional purposes, you know, all at once that there's never been a thing that's been created that we had to fear, even slavery. And why I say that because when we, I talk with Kabul about collective time and collective right. time is when human beings take collective responsibility over their time and you don't make progress unless collectively y'all make progress. That's the world view of collective time. Right. Or cyclical time, right? When you're looking at things in cycles, right? right? Which allows you to find the meaning of things and the cycles that we're going through, right. right? And so human beings, you have to identify what is our cycle here, right? What is the cycle we're going through where dr all drugs are becoming legal, all technology is now human imagination is at this precipice where almost everything that we imagine is now in front of us. We no longer have to imagine. Now that the collective imagination is being brought to reality, it's about the individual being able to see their imagination in reality. Right. So we got mid journey where you can type in a prompt and it automatically creates something that you was dreaming about by describing it. Was well, it prompt? Airily creates it. So backslash imagine. Black slash back back right. black slash that, yeah that starts out with imagine right imagine so yeah oh mid journey for those who who utilize mid journey it's a software where you can put in backslash imagine in the Discord channel and yeah. anything you type after that it starts to produce an images in reference of the words you use right it's which, a diffusion model which also means based on your skill sets based on what you already know your ability to create prompts is different. 
So a right. person that is a great storyteller, they can create a prop based on their ability to describe things. So exactly. if, if you're a poet, you would describe the sunset in a way, right? An illiterate person or a person that's not good at communication skills can. Right. Then you can, if you have it in your mind, a certain style that you want, then you can use artist reference based on their style, blending those styles to say, okay, create it like this. Right. So, you know, the soft, warm sun, right, as it risen, uh, 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 with the rays in front of it, you know what I'm saying? The way you're describing it, so the AI is going to try to create it that way. It's going to prompt four different images and be like, is this what you meant? And right. then you may say, no, go to the drawing board. Maybe you want to create something, let's say, wide scene. Make sure you put in 4K. Or maybe you want something that's more cartoon because that's what you was imagining. Right. So now, uh, human yeah. imagination is no longer left up in the imagination. At first, only artists, really good artists, had the ability to do that. Now every human being has the same opportunity as a really great artist. And that's to see everything in your head brought out into reality. When those kind of images, those type of thoughts are constantly being poured into reality, how does that change things? Well, great question. I know I threw a lot at you right there. Nah, nah, great question. One, there are already some studies that are coming back that are saying that generative art is therapeutic. Mm. How so? Generative art is therapeutic. What does that mean? That means if I could sit here and think of something and I'm able to manifest it in real life, like I'm bringing it down a tree of life, right? We'll get into that. Then there's a level of therapy that's involved because I could be someone suffering from schizophrenia. I could be somebody suffering from depression. I could be suffering from anxiety. I could be suffering from, you know, all of the maladies that affect the human mind, dementia. If I'm able to think of something in the form of a prompt, or if I could repeat that to someone who could be a prompt engineer who will take that and then type it out, right? Okay, you know. There's a level of, wow, I did that? Right. Right? The same way that with children, and there's studies that prove that if you have a 3D printer in your house, right, you could, you could, you, you, you could feed your child's mind and their imagination in many more ways than you could if you didn't have it in the house. What does that mean? That means that if we have a device where we could go from ideation to concept to prototype in a matter of a few hours, that right there is a body band. Like if a child could be like, oh, I'm scribbling something, ideation, and then they take it and they conceptualize it, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna feed that to the jet, I'm gonna feed that to, to Mid Journey, or I'm gonna feed that to one of the diffusion models this picture, because you go upload pictures and everything, right. and then boom, and then throw a prompt on it. You know, you put a prompt. I wanted full hyper realistic photo. You know, 8K, da 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 da, and then press it, and then it comes out with the quote unquote uh, generation. It generates the picture. Then you could generate the picture. You could take that picture. You could feed it through a 3D printer machine, and you could print that toy out, or you could print that scene out. Or you could print that idea out, man, and you could touch it, and you could sell it if you wanted to monetize it. We talking about some different shit right here. And hey, look, black imagination is underfunded in this country, and his world. I don't even really think it got a fund. I don't even really think it got a fund, right. right? Black imagination doesn't have a fund. So we never been able to really put our imagination into the algorithm. We put right. the way we use things into the algorithm and we've our been behaviors. changing. Right. Yeah, our behaviors have been modifying these algorithms to be cooler, to be better. Right. Because when you take the algorithm of black America and the way we use things, make it adaptable for everybody else. TikTok would not be TikTok if it wasn't for black people. Right. That's just the fact. If it, not be, because it wouldn't be no Instagram. It wouldn't be no rhythm on TikTok. Oh, with MySpace. Yeah. Nobody would know how to dance. Right. <laughs> right. And so 
You know, that's what that whole thing where the creators wouldn't get they just do from creating right. all of these viral dances, these viral styles. And now what I'm saying, which is crazy. Hold oh, on. I'm back, bro. I'm going to cut your words up. Fortnite, right? Yeah, Fortnite. Fortnite. They took it and they turned it into a mocap. They, they turned it into AI. They right. turned it into avatars. Bro, right. hey. What, what I was going to say, language. It's, it's, it's interesting as I listen to people of different ethnic backgrounds, man. They starting to, everybody's starting to sound the same. Right. Right, because language is no longer, you know, your geographical location. That's how you get your dialect, right? Because right. now, and it's so natural that it's no longer even appropriation because right. that's just the programming the that's in the algorithm. Now the culture has been vultured so much that is everybody's culture. You know where that started? Talk to 106 and Park. Dang. We're free at age. That's when it started. Because well, it, Terry it, Loxy. Well, free and AJ first. It introduced Shout out to Terrence and uh, AJ, I know both. Yeah. yeah. It introduced the culture, right, to regional cultures or regional aesthetics and whatnot on a global scale. And you know why I said that? Because when yeah. I hear people's talk, it sounds so natural. It don't even sound like they faking them. <laughs> right, right, right. I mean, it's, it's, it's been adapted. Yeah. It's an adaptation. Where people have now absorbed the, you know, all of the nuances. Right. You know what I mean? So it started on 106. I noticed that it was more so in a dressing style. So people. No, so I, I would have to say this, but I would say it started with hip hop, though. Cause no, that is hip hop. I know, but 106 didn't start hip hop. But I'm just saying, like, how hip hop, we distributed our style and culture everywhere, right? Oh, the way we talk, right. speak, language, all of that. And like I get what you saying, it's first bit up with one of those. Yeah, let's just say that. But yes, hip hop yeah. was able to introduce that sauce. Right. Right. It was it was local, regional, right, national, right, global. Right. Right. So now we traveled around the world together. Now you could go around the world, Africa, Asia, UK, Europe, and they put it on, you know what I mean? They got the same nuances. They dress it the same. You feel me? They bop it the same. And, you know, you y'all might have the same artists that y'all listening to. You know, so yeah, the mind state is similar or whatnot. Um Which is which is, you know, and 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 I just wanted to to bring out the observant point of reality and where we are. Like the world is becoming very blended. And the influence of black Americans is being diluted because now people are not being able to trace source, right? And so when you look at TikTok, TikTok did put it on steroids. Everybody has access to it, right? Right. Everybody's doing the dance. I seen a white woman with good rhythm the other day. Yeah, they are. I was joking, but I didn't see that. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. I got the jokes, man. I told you, man. I'm funny. I got these jokes from Chad GPT. Yeah, yeah Chad GPT and it's a turn. <laughs> Let me stop playing. This is art. This is natural intelligence. It's natural, right, right? No, but but I think that's it's, it's important to make these observations because we as a culture, the the most valuable things about us, right? This is really everything. But you know the way we do things, right. that's our value, right? The way we do things is our value, and so right. the appropriation is going to be at a higher level. Right. Oh, when yeah. artificial intelligence is appropriating the way black people do things. So let's, let's, let's get the example. Like you got artificial intelligence. This artificial intelligence doesn't have an identity. Right. Right. Doesn't have one nationality, one ethnic source. But actually, you really could say whoever developed it is his nationality. Right. Because it is the son of his father. That's so. Right. So oh, therefore, right. we know it's not black. Right. Right. But. Because artificial intelligence only works well through use. So you have to feed the machine. So millions of people using it, feed it to become better. Right. Artificial intelligence does take on the nationalities of the world. It takes on the ethnic background, language, program, speeches, pattern of thinking, influence. All of these things are being added into. So every prompt that you do is now being you know, updated based on the human collective intelligence utilizing it. So it has the identity of the human race, right? Based yeah, on who uses it predominantly the most. Right. Right. 
So, but I was listening and, you know, um, I think it was at the World Economic Forum where I heard just a snippet of a conversation and it was giving a breakdown how, you know, they're going to have uh, um, an Islam AI, right? Uh, have a Catholic AI, right? Have a Buddhist AI, right? Have like AIs based on like nations and each one of these nations will have their AI parameters set based on their geographical location, right? Right, And then you would make sure that you have AI regulations because you can have AI that is training the population against the government, right? Or against right. the state and the, uh, uh, the regulators, against the religion that is predominant there, against the rules in the establishment. The AI then would have to be particular to becoming a god of that nation, right? Right, because it's, it's the same thing of banning something on Google, like, no, you can't type and search that, right? So AI is not going to teach you how to create a revolution against your own government. Right. right. It's not going to allow, you know, the the students in the universities. Right. Because they already banned it in certain universities. Well, which which won't work. Right. I don't mean to cut your wisdom. That's chat GPT. Right. Right. Chat bot. Right. But I'm thinking just just AI regulation, period. Which they're not going to be able to. Right. 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 But, you know, people are always going to try to play and try to put God in the box. Right. right. And so the idea of it now is that, you know, the disruption in schools is immediate, yeah. right? Like, it's, it's like yeah. you have to automatically rethink school complete, completely. And it got disrupted. Social media already did that. Google did that. The internet right. did that. And so school has been just holding on to a thread, right? And now it's like, if if the AI can get an MBA, can get a doctorate, right? Can, can you know, pass the bar exam, right? Can, can get a pilot's license, you know, like, what is the, the, the factor in these schools, right? right? There has to be regulations set on certain jobs that says that only humans can have these jobs, AI cannot. That's the only way to save certain like jobs. Right. right, like a human union. Right. <laughs> because right. literally human beings are getting, right now, are going into poverty and going homeless and going jobless and can't feed their daughter and their kids because an artificial intelligent machine has took in their job. So this is a real life thing, and we already had, we already don't have enough jobs in a greater economy in our communities. Mm -hmm. So that means that you know the rich get richer, the poor get poor. Right. That's the system and the way it works. So for us to not have a concern level, but bigger than concern level, a pivot level, right? Like if if we have other natural intelligence is to see something coming, then learn, then pivot, right? Hum, uh, artificial intelligence mimics natural intelligence, right? Right. Then human beings need to adopt as well. Now that AI is here, now that social media is here, now that these things are here, what's the pivot? You know how many people that's afraid of the pivot, right? People that did not want to, you know, get a, a, a people that was doing brick and mortar and they didn't want to do an online store. All of them was forced to get one. Right. People, that, I'm never getting on social media, man. They right. TikToking and switching wigs and leggings with their girl. Right. You understand me? Looking crazy. It went from brick and mortar to click and order. Click and order. Right. You know, I had a store in Oakland, California. I was doing brick and mortar, but I never shied away from technology because I have never had a fear of God right. gives us dominion over all things. Right. And that doesn't stop with artificial intelligence. And so like a lot of these things that I'm teaching or that we're, we're talking about today is to challenge the human mind. It's to challenge the natural intelligence in you. As we talking in this conversation, I can, you know, we can just jump off ideas and ideas, right? Right. My ability to have great, you know, uh, uh, ability to produce ideas consistently and, and motility in the mind is key because the average human being today doesn't read and they can't think of ideas on the fly. Their right. brain processing power is slowed down because before they think they say, wait, let me add to the machine. So this is the gap right in the speed. Right. For me, I can come up with ideas. It won't stop. It keeps triggering. And that is the value of that human mind. Right. But when you take away that ability to produce ideas, right? So I talked about this before, like the ability to produce sperm, right? There's less sperm count and there's less idea count. Right. Right. And they correlate. Right. right? So testosterone decreased 1% every year for the last 40 years. 
that has a connection between your ability to produce those sperms and those ideas, the willful man. Right, right, right. So this is where we get into in society is that the decrease of the man is being replaced in this land. Right. You understand me? The decrease of idea generation, right, is being decreased. And so now the lack of dependency on your own brain and human mind is will be the ultimate destruction of human beings who create an over-reliant spirit on technology outside of themselves. Fact. Right? And so this is where the cautionary tale comes in. Not that you're afraid of AI. I'm afraid of the overuse of it. Right? In the sense that you stopped developing yourself because they started developing AI. Right? And so that's where human beings won't even know how to enjoy the experience of what it's like to be human. When I see here with you and ideas pop up in my head and I get visual, you know, cues from certain things and I can hear myself talk in my mind and I can go through that process. That's only came from my research and development phases. Right. Right. If I didn't, you know, back in the day. Right. You got libraries. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, at first, black people couldn't even go to certain libraries. We didn't even have access to books. Our, you no, know, before that, if we got caught reading, we get killed. Right. Right. Yeah. So if we got the way we thought about knowledge was different. For those who defied that and was like, I'm going to read regardless, they was like, the way they thought about education was crazy. Like, I will right. beat for this knowledge. Right. And they didn't even have access to, we got access, you know. Mm -hmm. So now that human hunger, and appreciation for knowledge decreases based on your ability to get it instantly, right? So you, we went from it being illegal, it being inaccessible, right? It being a journey, I gotta walk to the library, right? Till it being in my hand on load speed, so now I gotta have a little patience, the computer is slow as hell, right? right? To Google, I can ask Google or Jeeves, Yahoo, right? Whatever I want to, instant. Right to other people doing the research for us, way on YouTube, creating videos, giving me a breakdown so I can go direct to source of information. Right. I don't have to pick apart this treasure chest and try to find the jewel in there. Right. It's already handed. So now you don't know how to mine, how to cipher, how to research. Right. Right. And you don't know how to reference and double check things. So you well, don't even know yeah, if the information is yeah. the primary source or if it's facts or not. That's if it's true. Yeah. yeah. So. That is destroyed. So part of that scholastic process, right, of that human being that knows that information is that the development of that mind that's behind it. It's not just the outcome, it's the process. Right. And so the lack of process that's going to happen, right, is where we get destroyed. Mm -hmm. So now you can't think your way out of anything unless you have access to AI to where you can get its existence. Right. So now we're going to have AI wars, right? So, like, and that's why they're trying to connect to neural links. Now you got a neural link in your head. You think of some AI gives you the answer. You know, a, oh, gener a generation. You move it with neural link. That too. <laughs> but think, a generation, our generation may be a little more cautious towards it because we know what it's like to not have AI. Right. right. We think naturally, right? Everything that is natural now, right, is going to go to, you know, artificial, right? Like, you know, we grew up having a natural body was normal, oh right? Gosh, right. It was look. It was stigmatized. It was looked like you know Pamela Anderson was the only person I knew him from a kid when we, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying Jonah right, Rivers right, or so. Right, right. It was a few. Of, now it's ample. It's everywhere and it's right. normalized, right? Right. So we may think of brain augmentation and transhumanism, right, connecting humans to machine as crazy, but we literally have that going on today and is normalized. Human beings have decided to, you know, augment every part of their life and existence and body. So you have to be careful when you do that because the more you accept, the more you normalize and the easier it is to push that needle, right? right? So I 100% seeing a generation saying, sign me up, no problem, because they don't have the reference of what it's like after. So there will, this generation said, I don't know what it's like to not have AI. Just like this, this generation don't know what it's like to not have a black president. It skews their reality from the connection the way you perceive things. And when you talk to them, it's based on your root perception. Right. Their root perception is after internet, after social media, after AI, right? right? After Donald Trump. Right, right, right. <laughs> after 19 it, keys, it read. They it. considered digital 
and we're considered analog. Right. right? They're hardwired to interface with the technology. That shit is theirs. And, and to add on top of it, like I, I watch this channel on TikTok, they be going around to bodybuilders and asking me if they natty or not. Right. And 90%, 95% of them are not. Right? So the the this is the steroid. Right. Right? The yeah. idea of being natural, right? <laughs> That's going to be the phenomenon. Wait a minute. All right. you had, all, well, your brain natural? You just thought of all that yourself. Right, right. You know, it's the anomaly. You wrote that yourself? You, right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, that's a liver king who yeah. is used up and lying to people oh, about super it. Lying. This is what it is, right? I'm natural, by the way. If y'all, <laughs> y'all be seeing them yokes, you feel me? It was all natural, by the way. Now, listen, a little housekeeping. We have sports moss. Sports moss is what I've been using to get big. Now, I know some of y'all been seeing me and y'all been asking me if I'm going to play the next Black Adam, right? Y'all want to know if I'm going to get into wrestling or into boxing or I'm going to start bodybuilding and all those things. Now, the answer is no, right? I'm developing these broad shoulders and arms and legs because I can, right? I wanted to develop myself into the greater version, but I couldn't do it without the sports moss. Two of these a day and it increases the dysonine triphosphate which helps deliver that oxygen to my blood while I'm working out, right? And then it helps decrease recovery time. So in this, it says we got the elderberry in there, we got the vitamin D, the sea moss, the zinc, and the cordyceps. Now that conversation, I had you tapped in. This is the super saiyan, you understand me, pill right here. Yeah. Then we got the vitamin C moss. We have uh, smart moss, so each one does something different. Y'all know we don't be getting enough sun, so you gotta get that vitamin D in you anyway to regulate the hormones. You gotta get that vitamin C because we don't naturally produce ascorbic acid. So you gotta get it through food or some sort of supplementation in order for you to be balanced. You gotta get that green tea extract in there, help build up that immune system. Now we got shrooms, but not the shrooms that give you the psychedelic experience, right? But it is the shrooms that help you increase your psychic abilities, meaning your mind, meaning your brain. Right, as we age and we develop, we get old, decrepit, can't remember things, start to lose things. So we gotta tap in, especially in a world that's constantly making us mentally exhausted. Then of course we got the goal. Now y'all already know the goal, man. A goal to have us tapped into our electrical wiring systems, to where your brain synapses is firing just like you was a baby. You're constantly developing, regrowing, and reflowing, right? So if you want to tap into those energy systems of mineralizations that I use to tap into my body, rather than being infused with the chemicalizations to where you no longer got body, y'all come tap into the gold water pills, man. With everything that you say, right, I began to envision once again why what you're doing and what others are doing is so important. Yeah. Shows like high level conversations will be watched 20 years from now before this ship, right? Where people could be like, that was real intelligence. Right. You feel me? That's what it sounded like. My journey in consciousness is how I measure how things have changed dramatically. So when I started out, let's say the year 1999, when The Matrix came out, I remember going to watch Dr. Phil Valentine decoded right so they thought you were talking about dr phil Did you? i know right <laughs> it was a nine hour lecture i left there with a migraine because if he dropped so many bombs on my head that it made me i looked like i was blind in one eye bro the migraine was intense because he broke through that decalcified pineal gland he broke through all of that buck that was on my brain just being a nigga Man, you feel me? He made me think. He made certain gears in my head turn. They were laying dormant because nobody was able to challenge my mentality like that. Nobody was able to stretch my imagination before I sat down for eight hours. I had a whole notebook filled up with notes, right? And then fast forward to like 2008, right? When they began, when the master teachers began to, their, their sun began to set, right? And then the sunrise or of the new teachers, the sun began to rise on them, right? They were the new batch of scholars and whatnot, but they were from the hip hop generation. So they weren't finna sit around for eight hours to teach people anything. They was wrapping their shit up at four. 
You feel me? So we was in and out. They were dropping their information. It was out in four hours, right? Then we went into the YouTube generation, right? So in the YouTube era, 2000, because remember, YouTube didn't let you upload long form of, of videos at first, right? So what used to be four hours and eight hours now got relegated to an hour. You would get a good hour. You know what I mean? The, 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 the street videos where it was dropping it. Yo, I done around yeah. the Cypress. You get a good hour, hour and a half, right? Then we went to Instagram. Instagram started to siphon off the information to a minute. Damn near. You know what I mean? Then TikTok comes, right? So then you really get the one minute. It was almost like taking a bump. It was almost like taking a fucking, uh, you know, like a, a, a one of those shots that they give you, the nutritional shots that was like the little cup, yeah. but it packs a punch. Yeah. So it's like those one minute videos, like a whole lecture, right? They were able to consolidate a lot of information into one minute, right? So I'm like, damn, look how, because you can't sit up at a person who was getting knowledge from TikTok, who basically got their red pill on TikTok. They don't know about the eight hour lectures. You can sit up in front of a, a, a BHS video of uh, Bobby Nimmit or Phil, they gonna fake, they gonna fall out because it's too much. Well see, what, what's, what's missing in that is their ability to come up with the information. Okay. See, the, the, if, this is a highly informative society. Right. Hit information, data, statistics, facts. Right. Very informational, right? Right. Uh, the knowledgeable ones are the ones who know how to utilize it, implement it through experience. Filter it, implement it, right. The reflection and experience comes the wisdom, right? right? And so if you have people, and, and through that process of research, study, and development, you come up with creative ways to teach in the first place. You ponder upon ideas. You fill in the missing gaps of information you don't have by creating connection. Right. Right. And so the ability to be able to sit there and talk for four to eight hours means you're tapped in and you're streaming. These are people who are script scholars. Right. Right. And so script scholars, if you don't have a script in front of you, if it's not memorized, which is low level thinking, not high level thinking. Right. Right. Uh, recognition. Right then you don't have the ability to come up with it yourself. Right. Right. So therefore you can never be a master teacher. Right. Right. You can become a master communicator, which is different because script scholarship means that you can study just like an actor would and you can figure out ways to communicate. Right. But you can't originate. Right. Right. You never right? download it. Right. And that's the great separator because a person that you could be learning from and they, they breaking it down, boy, but it's a script. So they don't have the intelligence of use, mm. right? So okay. you put, you give them a phone, you give them a machine, you give them anything. They don't know how to use it because they're not used to really using their brain, wow. right? right? So they don't have creative agency. They don't have true intelligence, right? right? They don't know how to really solve problems, right? So we have a culture that is media-based, right? Yeah. Right? You, you know how to be a media personality, Right. But well, what media personality, you know, and out the history of media personalities that you say that that was a great person that did great things. And I'm talking about from their execution. They built the billion dollar business, but they can inform you on everything that's going on. They right. can break it down to six sound bites and segments. But their ability to think, the ability to think. Right. is still the singular greatest thing that human beings can do right. to think. So if. You that's don't, what distinguishes them. That's the distinguish. Right. Distinguishment, period. And so the artificial intelligence produces artificial thinking. Right? right? It's an artificial measurement of your own intelligence because you're measuring it by false measurements, metrics rather. Right. The metrics are the likes, the comments. Hey, man, thank you for teaching me that. You, you, you red pill me. You right. understand me? Mm -hmm. But this person can't come up with any philosophies on their own. Philosophers of 2,000, 3,000, thousands of years ago, they didn't get it off YouTube. These were ascended masters that learned how to think so well, they could write entire books and books and books and books and teach and teach and teach and teach because their mind had developed to become an ascended master. Because the distractions were different. Though. Yeah, you know exactly. It's but the distractions that don't ban down. What distractions do we have today that are the most potent ones that takes us away from our attraction. 
take us away from our traffic traction is distraction right because it can only be a distraction if you're gaining traction right right it's otherwise if you're not doing nothing you're not distracted right <laughs> right so you say some of the strongest yeah the strongest pulls um uh, shit the culture you know um gossip uh fornication and lust and stimuli Right, we are uh, very stimulated. We're stimulated, you know. We're stimulated people, you know what I mean. And the people that run the uh, the industry and whatnot, you know, some of the biggest players in the uh, flesh industry is what I like to call it on the internet. Uh, one, of the, I, I think the company's name is My Geek, right? And the people that run My Geek are masters at SEO. Right, they're masters of the internet. Right, that's the they're the new bosses in town. Right, so they're studying human behavior. They're studying neurological uh, aspects of the brain, how people think, and then they're able to they they were able to create that billion dollar empire that is really off of AdSense. You know, um, all of that internet stuff. It has nothing to do with what they're showing you. You're just stuck on that because you're addicted to stimuli. But they're making money on your data, man. Clicking on ads. Not to cut your you, wisdom, you, but mm -hmm. there's a brother who been stealing all of my videos. Yeah, and they booming. He doing it better than my team. Yeah. <laughs> Only reason I ain't get his videos taken down because he gave me great exposure. They in hundreds of thousands. Oh, well, right. you understand me? That's but so. but I want my check. You know who you are, Nigerian brother. Right. Yeah. yeah. Break it down because if you know how to master online marketing. If you know how to make videos go viral, if you know how to put videos in front of people, then you basically can own a, 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 your own corner of the internet. YouTube automation, right? So right. that's one of the things that people are doing. That's one of the things in, in the high level challenge we talk about, like creating systems and solutions in different ways, right? That you can monetize AI and the new technological revolution. So it's not just about thinking, it's about monetization, right? So YouTube automation is essentially, you know, right now it's like utilizing AI tools to, or you want to, you want to give a, a breakdown? Six channels. Yeah. See, he got six channels. Got so six you don't even have to utilize your own face. There's a lot of people who are afraid of the camera, right? And, and this is what I want people, this is what I want you to appreciate about where we at right now. You don't have to be a coder to create apps, right? Right. You don't have to be a great communicator to give lectures. Right. Right. You don't have to be a writer to put out a book, right? You don't gotta be an artist to make art. You don't have to be an artist to make art. You don't have to be a rapper to make a song. Right. The, the, there's a, a fortunate and unfortunate aspect of that, but what I'm saying is all of your excuses have now been eliminated. All of the things that you could have utilized that held you back as to a why right. as you didn't execute, they have now been disappeared. And now you have to internalize and look at yourself. And this is why. Coaching and community is the most important thing right now. Not just course, the information is there, you can get that. But having somebody that you can connect with, that can communicate, being in a community of like minds, right? That can hold you accountable. People that you can teach, people that you can learn from. This is the power today, right? Because now you can go through that process of self-development where you can actually get things done, right? It's not about what you know, it's about what you do. It is the generation of execution. It's going to make a lot of people lazy because they're going to start, you know, uh, uh, developing a lot of self-doubt about themselves. Their learning a disability goes into your lack of proper execution as well, right? If you can't learn things well, you can't do things well, yeah. right? And so you have to now take a self-audit. Like, okay, Keys and Red said all the information is out there. All the instructions is out there. What is stopping me from getting to my potential? And then you have to be so self-aware that you don't want things that are beyond your scope of execution and transformation. If you're not willing to develop the habits to meet the goal, don't create the goal. Mm. It's that simple. But if you're willing to go through that arduous process of, of trial and tribulation, of error and correction, right, of lesson and development, then create all the goals in the world and meet them. Right. Me, I, if, if you don't dare talk about you want to be a billionaire, if you're not willing to go through the development of being a billionaire, say, speak your truth. Right. Otherwise, that's that's a form of illusionist, deceptive lying to yourself.
mm. right? Not positive self-talk. That's lying because you, yo, subconscious mind, this has crazy. Uh, and then he said, Billy, he said, Billy, Billy would a beat? <laughs> no, he ain't mean that about a beat. He must be tripping. Self is like, brother, we'd be happy if you, if you could make $1,000 consistent, right? So can we develop the habits of a thousandaire before we try to create the goal of a billionaire? Right. And so here we are with society right now. It's about developing the habits. It's about developing yourself as a thinker. Right. That's what I want to see. What did Noble Drew Ali? If I could say, if I could only get you to think. think right. right. All of our great teachers were only trying to do one significant thing to get you to think. Because they know once that process started, you became unstoppable. Right. And so the enemy job is to get you to stop thinking. Super. Right. To nullify your thoughts. Right. To decimate your ability to be able to think and convert that into action. The ability to say be and it is. Mm -hmm. But that process from be and it is, is the work. Right. It's not just the instantaneous happenings in life because it's not just the law of manifestation. It's the law of work. Right. Right. The law Angle. of confidence, the law right. of labor, the law of balance for every action. There has to be an equal action. Right. right? So. This is at the core of my mission this year is to create high level thinkers, right? People that have the ability to get consistent results. They just live a life and they just see things that were in their head now in their reality. Right. They see checklists just being, man, we, we, we grabbing a knife and we cut this paper down right. because we did everything on that vision board, right? We taking what's a three year and we getting that done in three months. And I want y'all to understand this. You had that goal before AI. Some people had their goals before Google and the internet, yet their timeline for their goal is the same. Mm. How is the timeline the same, but the access resources and technology for efficiency changed? So that's laziness. That means you decided that the technology increased 10 times to increase my efficiency 10 times, but I'm gonna keep the same timeline, which makes me 10 times lazier. Come on now. So we 10 times the procrastinator today. We have operating with a sense of urgency to execute, not just to learn. To execute is the key. There should be no father with children that don't execute. Right. But Peace, family. The block represents the blockchain. It's new technology that allows us to create a completely new world, to upend the existing systems and create our own structures. Our parents had that opportunity. Our grandparents didn't have that opportunity. No other generation had that opportunity since the Constitution was created, since the banking system was created, since the education and the media systems was created. But our generation have that opportunity that if we learn and we educate ourselves, we can create the world that best fits us in our image to where you can take the bottom and you can rise them to the top. Then the world is a representation of your knowledge, your ideas, the things that you know, those concepts that define your belief system, how you see, perceive, live, sense, and feel about the world. And order is the first law of the universe because nothing can be done without order. We want to help you get the knowledge, get the technology, and get the community within your life so that you can have a foundation to be able to build on so that your family has a last name that is worth something. I'm 19 Keys. Make sure y'all tap into the block world order. This again, it would find being a man hard, but a man is willful. I tell that story about I tell that story about, you know, Garcia and the Cuban Revolution. Mm -hmm. When he had to take that letter across the impossible field. Right. And he got it done with no excuses. And that story was a story about a time where young men were willful. Right. Right. They had grit. They had perseverance. Right. They had confidence. They have the ability to go through it and get it done. Right. And this is where we lack. I've been to four states this week. Mm -hmm. Right. And... You know, I had to think about my journey because I heard somebody telling the story of somebody that was just like a great work horse. They would just get it done and done and done. And I found myself tired. And I said, what am I tired for? I beg a lot for this. Right. When when I was broke 
You understand me? Sleeping on the floor with a blow up mattress, rather. I begged a lot to help me break out my potential. So how I dare complain to a lot for giving me exactly what I asked for. Right. Right. And so you have to be you 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 have to turn everything into a system of gratitude. And AI can teach you that. Right. This is this is emotional intelligence. This is natural intelligence. This is this is gratitude and gratefulness. Like this is a process of human beings that can't be duplicated by anything. This is the soul and the spirit acting in intelligence. Right. And so we have to be grateful that we live in this day and time where we have the greatest tools in the world. Yes, the greatest distractions. The systems are working and overflowing in abundance as well. They're programmed. But guess what? Human beings are showing us potential of possibility every day. Because if somebody else did it, what do they have different than you? Do they got two brains? Do they got four arms? Four legs? You got. Do they got three hearts? They got the same organs lined up, legs, all of that. Right? right? We might all look the same, but you don't even need half some this to compete in this marketplace of ideas and execution, right? right? So like, I'm handsome for no reason. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I could be ugly and get this done. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you ain't even got that excuse. Right. <laughs> look, look, the AI can throw the future on you now in real time live, right? You can be live with an AI throwing the future over everything. They do it. You might not even notice it, but they already started doing it on your iPhone, right? If you notice it, you would notice your eyes switch and change a little bit because the AI put an automatic filter on it. It's a man, right? Who does it? Every single application. So that's that body dysphoria. Right. If, 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 and this is why the word natural is the most important word today. Right. Because we love ourselves artificial more than we love ourselves natural now. Mm-hmm. Right. We love all the artificial things about all of the, the artificial intimacy. Right. This is the A. That's the other A.I. The artificial intimacy. Hell, about Hell yeah. Social media creates faux intimacy. It's right. fake. It's not real. But it makes you feel connected. You got hearts blind. Right. I think your picture is this shit. It, you feel wanted. It makes you addicted to it. You get dopamine. So if I'm getting right. it from social, I don't need it from you. And that's why I said if a woman got she clocking five hours a day on social, she got her fake intimacy. She don't need the real. Right. Right. He get he you stimulated beyond the human connective experience. So this destroys the relationship IQ. Right? right. This destroys your emotional and your love IQ. Right. Instead of being connected to a human being, you're trying to figure out how do I become more connected to a machine? Mm. Right. So we're not looking for love in each other. We're looking for love through the machine. It's transhumanism already. It's cyborg reality. Right. So not only is it through the machine, but it's vicariously through the machine to thousands of people who you don't really know like that. Mm. Right. So there's a level of, you know, they're like lusting over you. You know what I mean? They're, you know, they're fetishing this shit. Oh, I just like this and this and this. But it's like, you never even heard that person talk. <laughs> nah, dead ass. Like, there's like these IG models and whatnot that I, I've been following them for years. Oh, man, they can't speak that way. Yeah, when they had the videos pop up and they start chatting, I'm like, wait a minute. That ain't up. That, that's not my boo. That ain't bait. That's what I'm saying. Like, well, we're, but they close face. Like, somebody's cold. I thought it's your home, but. She check out this low shit. She, these puts out. Sounded like Britney Grader, but no, no, no disrespect. I'm just saying that, like, you We're going to lurp the word. There's a level of full, you know, love and intimacy. Um, I've heard from people on the dating, in the dating market, that with the rise of social media, well, I would say the social media algorithms, because early social media wasn't what it is now, right. to whereas people can't put the phone down. Feel me? I remember like 2015 and 14, I had like, I didn't, I didn't have like the iPhone. I was, I was team Android. Yeah. And I remember being in New York and I would be like, damn, how the, why is everybody knows in the phone? Like, what are they looking at? And I wasn't that much into social media like that. I would get on and get off. This new algorithm and whatever they've done by studying the human brain and human activities is they've created a digital addiction. So I've been told in the dating scene in the last four to five years, trash. You dig what I'm saying? Because of 
the rise of social media, people comparing themselves, not being able to receive real love, you know, talk about not being able to articulate true feelings and things of that nature. And, you know, this shit just being about, you know, uh, what was it, body counts and other little things or whatnot, becoming more robotic, right? Where people are becoming more like a machine. You feel me? And then the level of intimacy between, you know, the genders with machines, that's increasing. So men are being, you know, we don't need y'all anymore because we got a robot in the house. You feel me? And that robot starts out as a small robot, but over the years, that shit is even growing in size. You dig what I'm saying? So it's like, damn, are we really being replaced by devices? What happens when that device starts talking? What happens if they could make that device look like Tupac? I'm just saying, with all of this, we don't need you, we don't want you, you're not really here, but for one thing, if they can replace their one thing, then what? You feel me? So we're at this place where, yeah, this shit is looking a real weird and whatnot because the same people who was like, I don't know about AI, but how, how you don't know about AI, but you talk it to Alexa. That's a that's AI. That's a language model. You don't know AI. You don't know about AI, but you got here with your GPS, with Snoop Dogg's voice. You don't know about AI, but hey Google, play Kodak Black, mm. right? You don't know about AI, but you got the ring camera. You don't know about AI, but you got the little thing from the Amazon that's sweeping your house and vacuuming, and you don't got to pick up a vacuum cleaner no more. Well, what is that thing doing? It's mapping your house. It's mapping your house. It's mapping everything about the house and it's listening to you, right? All of those machines are connected to what is known as the Internet of All Things. So smart devices, they all report back to what brain and whatnot. So some of us got AI right in the crib, right? Got AI amongst us, have intimate relationships with AI, right? AI know your darkest secrets but you don't know about AI. You feel me? So we got to reevaluate what it is that we don't even know that we're dealing with AI. Your iPhone is AI. Especially if you got the 14 and all of that stuff, 5G, that's 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 AI. Shit. Uh, 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 social media, anything that's- Social media is integrated with AI. All of those algorithms, even spell check. When you be writing something and try to finish the sentence from you, that's a language model. And you like, I wasn't trying to say that. Think think for that so for a second. Like, did that increase your spelling ability or decrease? It actually decreased. So it. that's a great example right there where something that's finishing the sentence for you, right? Something that's finishing the spelling for you is decreasing your ability to spell yourself. And if, if, if you take that micro example and you macro it across the whole entire landscape, that's what's going to happen. Right. Unless, of course, individuals come with the proper methodology or the approach, right? Everything is an approach, right? And everything has a method to it. So if we're able to get in front of it, right? And have some type of training where people could become more certified, right? So at least they know, look, I already went through this training. Even if you find yourself backsliding, you could go back. So what it is your training was to do what? To enhance all mighty intelligence. And with all mighty intelligence is emotional intelligence, is natural and all of these intelligence are underneath that umbrella, right? If you're still in touch with nature, right? If you're still tapping into the network inside of you or whatnot, yes, then you will be safely guarded against a lot of the new things that it, they're going to be rolling it out. It's going to be a deluge in a minute, meaning that you're going to be drowning in it the same way that many of us were drowning in the information in the past three years. So it's like, how do you even get a chance to learn? You don't even get a chance to let that shit breathe. Right. You watch one video on YouTube, you like, yeah, that was deep. But then another one, you like, yeah, that was deep. And then another one is challenging everything that you saw in the last two. So it's like, 
you're not even really getting a chance for letting that to marinate and to really like apply it because we're addicted to the deluge. So we're drowning in information. We're not swimming in information. There's a deluge of information. So when there's a deluge, rather than you're at the wall of drinking, like, yo, this is a fountain of information. But now when you drown in it, it becomes a little bit less effective because it's like, damn, I can't even use it for my benefit. Right. So soon there will be a deluge of AI tools and AI resources. And we'd be like, damn, I didn't even master one of them yet. And they just throwing all of this new stuff at me. So it's going to be a deluge. And I would say while it's early, right? Because it's all about timing, right? If this was 2009 and I was like, yo, they just wrote a white paper on Bitcoin. I'm going to give you a rundown of what the white paper means. They sell it in at like five cents. Why don't we all put $500 into it each and they come back to it in five years? I'd be told it to a room full of billionaires because we were on time. If the timing, I remember he jumped on DYL and he was perfect on timing for the NFTs. They call it the NFT keys and the world was not all boarded to what an NFT was. So what did some of the, the listeners and the watchers do? They went and bought NFTs right off of that episode early in the game and now oh, When we was in Miami, they was running into keys and it was like, yo, I'm up, bro. Thank you. Because my thing is worth about 10 ethers right in theory right now. Because I listen to you. Time me. Right? And then there was people who hated NFTs and they hated Bitcoin. Why? Because they were getting anxiety whenever people were told me about their success because they wasn't on time. So they wished for the downfall of it. And then when the numbers and the prices fell, they still didn't take advantage of it. Now the shit going back up and they got the gas space. Right? It wasn't on time. Donald Trump did. Donald Trump over here running up a bag right now with well, his time. Look, so it's in a, it's in a, Amazon are supposed to be rolling them out. And, and here's right. the thing. Somebody asked me, why come you're not constantly teaching about crypto and NFTs? I am. I'm just not teaching to you. Right. And the reason I, I say that, hard enough. The the reason I say that as well, because if you go back to my first interview I did with EYL, I gave the whole master class. How it's going to be used. You did. Right. Use cases. The the way people are going to adopt it, right? The the idiocracy of adopting things that have no value, right? right? The bubble of it all. But if you only listen to your reason why you want to get in, right, you follow that, and now you're mad at somebody else. Right. But see, I don't mind people being mad because you're showing me that you're mad that you weren't smart enough to process all the information, right? right. And so we at this point now, NFT use cases can still growing, right? Of the board at Yacht Club, you know, they're still growing, of right? They went through the, the racist talk. They went through all of that and they're still growing and developing. Right. And so when you play any game for short term, then you would never going to go through that period of bubble, right? Decline, right? And then standard. Like so, right. right. So now we're entering the standard use case, not the, the, the promo, the hype, the bubble. Right. Right. Companies are saying that, wait a minute, same thing JP Diamond was saying that he didn't like Bitcoin, but he said he loved the blockchain. Right. But at the same time, you can't say you don't like Bitcoin and not the blockchain because Bitcoin is a blockchain. People right? can choose. But the whole AI, cryptography, all of these things were born right from the same systems. What do they do? They, they give the human being customization over their own reality. Anybody in here can create their own cryptocurrency. Right. Right. Now, there's a way you got to create it to where the AI or the regulators don't come after you. But those options weren't there at first, at least not from like creating it in a blockchain, double money record system. Right. Right. Now you literally can say, well, black people, let's create our own dollar. And if we were all in a collective agreement, then we will all go off the Fed, the monetary policy system. Right. right. That, that, that could be an overnight thing. These things weren't possible. Why? Because not only was it the blockchain there, the communication system wasn't there. Right. How could you get a communicative thought to all people in the no, world at once? Real time. Social media. It can go viral. Everybody can share it on a page. Now everybody knows and we set the date and we say this is the day we, we turn over the leaf. Right. Right. We switch the paradigm. The that ability to make instantaneous revolution possible, meaning that we now have the same tools our oppressor used against us. Right. Right. To a degree. To a degree, but almost to every degree. Right. Right. 
we can create our own schools, create our own degrees. We can create right. our own banking system. Oh, definitely. Right? We can, you know, working with each other and creating that oath with each other, right? Creates that army, right? right. Creates that police system, right? Amongst each other. Security. Right. We are backing each other up. We have an oath towards each other, Back. right? We can utilize technology to create our own technology. It's there, it's standard, right? We can have our own media, right? We already see it. The podcasts are not utilizing them in the, in the correct manner, a lot of them, when they're talking about a lot of nothingness. But what happens when you finally give a people a voice that have been through 400 years of suffering? Right. You don't think they're going to talk about the suffering, right? <laughs> right, right. So I'm not mad at people talking also. about the issues of toxicity and masculinity and femininity. People want them to stop talking about it, but we ain't solved it yet. We didn't get through it. Yet. Right. So we like start, we just we just bored our shit. So Black Culture on be what is Black Culture Podcast is still a baby. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we ain't got it all we ain't one month old yet and we already complaining about what we talk about. But I want them to be there because I don't want to discourage people from starting platforms because when we do mature and we decide to everybody, because this ain't happened yet. Well, we we decide to have mass days where everybody says, Well, this week, this month, this year. We're going to change all our content up, and this is what we're going to project as a mass psychological operation to where we're changing the things that we talk about, we think about. These are the solutions that we're going to propagate. A, ver a reverse but, psyop. A reverse psyop, but these things weren't possible at first. Right. Right, and so that is the key component that we have to take about 2023 and going and beyond is about what is possible now. So as we talk about AI, we talk about blockchain, we talk about Web3, we talk about media, we talk about the internet, we talk about the interconnectivity of these different things. You have to think about the possibilities, right? Of the on the three Ps. That, that our ancestors did not have at first. Right. I'll be on the three Ps and the three Ps will get us to places that we've never been before. Possibility, right? The possibilities for us to do anything that we put our minds to, right, have increased tenfold to a hundredfold. Probability, the probability for us to solve some of the problems that have stifled us for time of moral, the probability of that has now increased tenfold to a hundredfold. And the potentiality, right? The, the potential, the natural potential for us as individuals and, and as a collective to utilize the tools and the resources that are now available to each one of us at our fingertip to turn this thing in the other direction has now increased tenfold to a hundredfold. So three P's in a pod, my brother, we in a different place right now. So everything has leveled up. So... In this high level conversation, I want us to simply think something that may go extinct one day. <laughs> Thinking itself, do it while it's still free, right? Do it while it's still legal, right? Do it while you can, right? Because thinking is something that people seldom do, but they often need. Thinking is a deliberate man's game, it is a skill, right? Thinking itself is a whole nother sense, right? The ability to think through problems, the ability to solve your own problems, the ability to understand and create solutions is the most powerful thing that we have today. No matter what technology is, there is no technology greater than the human mind. The human mind is incalculable. AI can only uh, understand what we give it. It cannot understand beyond the limits of understanding. Right. Meaning that the human mind is still something that we don't understand. Most people understand the brain, the locality of the brain being in the shell of your head. Right. But the mind itself is as vast as the universe. The mind itself is as mysterious as darkness and light. So as we go on that journey of understanding ourselves, our souls, our spirit, we also have to now take into accountability our abilities to solve our problems. That is our responsibility, our ability to respond. So. There should be nothing that comes up in your quandary of thought. There should be no issue that pops up and say, oh, if I don't know how to solve it, I now know how to figure out how to solve it. That's the process, right? Developing the habits to produce the outcome that we want to see. Taking that high level challenge 
to understand that mind is awareness, potential, and transformation, right? Once you become aware, you can utilize the skills and the knowledge that you have, your environment, your reflection of your environment to produce that potential that you are aware of, that high level being that you can see. That one is that is a great communicator, a great thinker, a great executor, a great doer, right? And then going on that process of being willful, right? Of, uh, uh, of having the grit and the perseverance to actually go through that transformation. Mm. If you follow that formula, you have all of the steps you need. In fact, artificial intelligence is just that, it's artificial intelligence. Natural intelligence is what we already have. If anything, utilize both of them to have enhanced intelligence. That's what it's there for. Now, what you use it for is determined upon who you are, your moral, your spirit, your soul, right? But I know we have many problems that we have not solved yet. Solve the household problems. Sometimes you don't have to, you don't have to go to AI for that. We can go to our ancestors. Our ancestors' intelligence is the correct AI that we need to operate off of because everything else is unnatural. And when you tap into that AI of your ancestors' intelligence, they can teach you how to do family. They can teach you how to be a man teach you how to be a woman, teach you how to think, teach you spiritual intelligence, how to operate your soul, teach you how to be whole within yourself, how to create a culture. They can teach you every single thing when you operate off the ancestors' intelligence. This has been a high-level conversation. Continue to tap into that AI, not artificial, but ancestor. Peace. Peace. <laughs> with the dog. Um, in the course of this conversation, you know, I, I like to think of these high level conversations as chemical reactions. Yeah. Right. Um, as prompt engineering, right? Mm -hmm. Giving you props to where you can say different things, think of different things, have a different sort of experience than the one you have in the normal reactions that by yourself or with the world. Right. So how was this experience in terms of the things that made you think about in terms of artificial intelligence and reality? Well, as with any conversation that I have with a, a fellow, you know, um, almighty intelligence or a fellow intellect, it, it, it goes back to what you were saying about the prompts. It's been said that you could only get the best answer for the best questions. You feel me? So as you ask me these questions, it allows me the opportunity to visualize and to think of things in my mind to go places where it may not have gone if I'm only by myself or if I'm not being asked proper questions by somebody who, you know, is going to make me think and whatnot. So, yeah, I was able to visualize um, the now. I was able to visualize what tomorrow was going to look like. I was able to take con concepts that you were delivering it and integrate it into concepts that I'm working with right now. And yeah, it was definitely something that uh, it, it, uh, I could take this now and do what I need to do and continue the process of molding this information or this piece of coal into the diamond that it is. Psychedelics and AI don't necessarily mix I don't know if anybody's have, have ever taken, you know, the magic mushrooms or whatnot, but I can't interface with technology while I'm going through that trip. It, it, it's, it, it, it glitches me out. What I can do is I could go into the darkness and I could download a thousand prompts or I could download a thousand ideas, ideation to feed to AI when I get out of that state, right? I'm able to visually um, travel to places and mentally travel to places that um, I necessarily probably, you know, I'm not gonna say that I can't do that sober or in a meditative state. It just gets me there faster. We're in Houston. This is the home of SpaceX. They're talking about going outside of the dome and whatnot. When I'm talking magic mushrooms and plant-based medicine, I'm talking going inside. SpaceX is inside of you. You understand? The shows and all of that NASA stuff, that's inside of you. You, you will take a, there's, there's, it'll take you more 
time to find everything inside of you that has taken them to quote unquote discover these planets. There's infinite amount of research that you could do by just going within, right? So the key to me with the psychedelics is to go within mine, right? Like how you had a mind the mind for diving, you're mining the treasure trove of the mind through the DNA and the DNA is ancestral. So yes, ancestral intelligence. You're gonna be getting information from the future, the past, and the present. Because I'm of the understanding that a lot of the megalithic and monolithic structures that have been built was being built from the future backwards. You do what I'm saying? We think that it was done during the dinosaur age. And I'm like, what if it's done? Because if they're if they're carbon, if they're doing all of this mathematical work with the pyramids, that's not AI. If they carved all of these stones, they were not used as a form of technology, bruh. You, you mean to tell me they were doing that with a chisel? You know what I mean? So there was technology prior to what we see right now. We're catching up to what we may have previously lost and whatnot or what awaits us. Um, virtual reality, the Oculus, right? How many people have taken that trip into the virtual reality or the virtual realms or whatnot through the Oculus, right? The, it, like the virtual realm is mind blowing. You feel me? But once again, without moderation, you could get stuck in it. You dig what I'm saying? Without, without some type of discipline, it all boils down to discipline. It all boils down to foundation. You gotta be standing on something. You cannot interface with none of these things just being, you know, being able to be blown in the wind. You got to have a foundation. You have to stand on something. You dig what I'm saying? And you have to have some type of self-control. So the porn industry, they've utilized every single technology to be the breadwinners, or they basically were able to teach all other industries how to adapt. They did it with stream the video. They did it with process their payments. And they're doing it with virtual and whatnot. So yeah, it's already integrated and whatnot to where they have virtual OnlyFans or they got virtual, you know, um, experiences where you could be right there with somebody as if that you were, you know, that you were here really. And they also have haptic biting. Does anybody know what the haptic suits are? They're like a full up technology that gamers use them. So whereas if you get punched, the hat dick suit will make you feel like you got punched. It'll like vibrate and whatnot. That is a very excellent experience on shrooms. Listen in the 432 Hertz, by the way, or like some great music, some classics. Don't put on NBA Young Boy and a, and a hat dick suit or some shrooms, by genius. Like you might not come back, you know, throw pocket. It's just gonna be a little different experience. But I'm saying for frequency raising, for tapping into something that you may need, ne ne never uncovered and what not to go places that you may not have gone before, you can integrate some forms of technology and do that. Haptic technology, uh, what's the name? The Wooger Vest. I have the Wooger Vest and I got the belt, you know what I mean? Powerful technology and they also use it for healing and whatnot. But they also have haptic for the porn industry based on with the virtual. So if you busted that, you gonna start shaking. You know what I'm saying? Like he really did that. You could, they have they have they have it set up to where as you could do virtual dating and whatnot, and you could get pleasured from afar. So they're deep in it with it. They they go in with the technology and for who saw the movie because the movies already came out. To get you into that, right? The the movie called She with the same guy that played the Joker. Uh, there was another one with Sheena. Um, what's the names of the titles? It was her, Harvey, yeah, not she, her. Uh, ex ex Machina, and there was another one that was in coverage in which one? Well, I know the episodes of Black Black Mirror. And it was was it, they, oh, they Judge, ventured into that oh, Judge Dredd with uh, Sylvester Stallone and uh, Sandra Bullock as well. Uh, and Meteor Man, 
No, no. What's the one we had up with? Where, where, where's the snipes was in it? The militia man, right? The militia man. Uh, he they was they he was having you know relations with a robot. So yeah, that's out. That's here. You know what I mean? They got six bots and all of that stuff. You know, talking about so yeah, they're going to utilize that form of entertainment and they're going to integrate it with the new technology because that they, there's less of a resistance in that. You know what I'm talking about? Well, you, you just got to show somebody some tits and they, they I'm signed up. What I signed up? Like, sorry, up. You know what I mean? Like, it's an easier all more. So that's where they're going with it. Uh, I just throw it out there as well. Psychedelics and love making. You know, talking about fellas, if you're trying to get your name back, yeah, that part. <laughs> you know, talking about, I'm just saying, Tantra, right? Try that out. Some breathing, some exploring into the spiritual realms without going through intercourse and whatnot. Both of y'all may be on plant medicine, healing from trauma, past like traumas and whatnot. Breathing, you know what I mean? Being able to work on some tantric exercises. And things of that nature, you know, uh, writing things down and whatnot, talking to each other. That has an effect. You know what I mean? That has an effect. I would prefer that than the fiction, the artificial. You know what I mean? You're just going to get artificial love. You know what I mean? But all slug. You know, throw them out. Does porn hug, hug you back? No. So it ain't real. So what's not real, we should not put light energy into it. So and here it is, the black mirror. It's not real, but it's capturing your life energy. You're intimate with it. You're carrying it a lot. It's capturing it. All of that carbon in it, all of that copper in it, all of the quartz is in it, all of the coltan is in it. You don't think that it's capturing you? You don't think that it dulls you? So, we have to be very careful about what we're getting intimate with. Get intimate with a human being. You did what I'm saying? Somebody that can give it back to you. Somebody that can help you feel again. You did what I'm saying? We don't want to be heartless and non-emotional beings and whatnot. Moving around where we don't even know how to feel. We just know still a lot. We just get shot. We want dopamine releases. That is a future that you don't want to be a part of. So in this conversation, I actually caught a lot of downloads, you know. Um, it's funny, a lot of them I made sure that I didn't share. You know, you see me on my laptop, I was writing things down, bringing things up, and I wanted to be intentional about that, you know. And in this era, it's all about opportunity, right? If you just learn and you don't take the opportune time, because there's, there's literally a thing about opportune time, right? And when you understand finding opportunities within time, you know, your urgency, you know, expiration, right? I see life through opportunities, right? I can visualize how much time I have left. You can find things early and you can jump on them. And so the opportunities that exist within this space oh, to be a creator are all here right now. It's equal for everybody. You make a plane about what comes next later. You make a plane about who becomes a billionaire. You existed in that same time with the same opportunity. This is the opportune time. There's going to be a time every single day it closes and closes and closes, and then that's when people try to get in. When it's closed. We have to stop trying to open doors when they close. Instead, we have to learn to walk through them when they're open. And right now, they're open for all of us. There was an opportune time for Bitcoin. Still exists. Opportune time for NFTs. Opportune time for blockchain. Opportune time for social media. Opportune time for the internet. How many opportunities will we allow to just go by us? The distraction will exist. The murder, the death, the systematic oppression, all of that will continue to exist alongside the opportunities. The one that you feed the most, you live the most. Experience of racism is not just having it in your daily environment. It's what you feed yourself. The stimuli of things that you experience when you go through and you scroll on social media, when you talk about it with friends, you can experience racism through second hand, third hand, right? But you can also experience freedom by speaking to fearless people, by engaging in truthful activities, by being your real or your peer self. 
High level conversations is all about making you who you're supposed to be. I can't make you that, but I can help guide you, give you the tools. Like I said earlier, you can only be distracted if you're gaining traction in the first place. If you're working towards something and something veers you off that path and it has completely nothing to do with your goals, you've been distracted. So gaining traction, right? Gaining attraction towards the things that you want to pull into the universe requires focus. Without that focus, that distraction becomes subtraction and you stop gaining traction. And when you stop gaining traction, it's because you stop putting action in there, right? And so at the root of all of it is to act to act upon the knowledge, to become willful in all things that you do and all things that you desire. They should not just stay in the world of the cloud, you should bring them down to the ground. High Level Conversations is giving you those tools, continue to tap in, make sure you take the high level challenge, make sure you tap into the smart moss, the different pills and things of that nature that we're creating to make sure that you can utilize your brain because everything else is there to destroy you. I'm 19 Keys and you just tapped in to another high level conversation. Enjoy this traction. Once again, Brother Red Pill, one half of the Twin Pillars, uh, co-founder of Know the Ledger and Neniverse. And we have a three pack that we're gonna be rolling out dealing with the AI specifically. Our first endeavor will be a lecture and it's entitled Almighty Intelligence, Harnessing the Human Mind to Interface with Artificial Intelligence, the second that we have coming in Black Future Month, which is in February, right? We don't do Black History Month. We're gonna talk about Black Future Month, and that is gonna be a course, and it's gonna be called 40 AIs in a Mule, right? 40 AIs in a Mule, okay? And what we'll be doing is we'll be giving you 40 use cases for the AI, 40 different AIs in its use cases, and we're gonna be giving you methods ran down uh, step by step on how to utilize that AI to open up multiple income streams, okay? So you could be somebody that could be walking around with 100 income streams, and you'll be able to receive what they promised us with the 40 acres in a mule. But because we're living right now, in the now, which is as in the future, 40 AIs in a mule. And then the last one that I'll be doing, which is gonna be a workshop in a boot camp, is AI for star seeds. Instead of AIs for dummies, I'm gonna be giving AI for star seeds, and that will be teaching young children from the age of three all the way up to 16 how to utilize the AI for beneficial purposes and how to, uh, for homeschoolers especially, and anybody who wants to get ahead of the public education system and begin to teach their children artificial intelligence or the use cases of AI and how they can level up in life moving forward. I just want to say thank you to everybody for your time and your attention. Love and life. Peace. Twelve.